He didn't tore. Tore? Pulled it. Mm-hmm. Right through the hip. Like a pull, like a ugh. Like a little rubber band went. Like a bad sprain. Now look at me, I'm still walking. That's my knees. I can hear your knees. So you, you, you didn't hear too much bell of no. Not on my leg, no. Not like Robbie's arm, no. That's why I haven't shaven yet, because I think the hair is what's keeping my leg together. The hair being intertwined is holding my legs together. We know what they say about guys that shave their legs. They gotta buy razors. Where you been? Thousand and one? Thousand and two? I said I'll keep doing these to Robbie gets back. A thousand left. Let's count now. A thousand and five. It's a light day. It's been a light day. anyone it's all right it's okay I got it I got it I don't need a spot it's okay I got it you got it I got it that's all right sometimes I feel like I'm training alone <laughs> just find myself I thought we were warming up
Yeah. I'm okay. It's alright. I shouldn't talk about legs tearing because I pulled this one bad last week. Oh yeah? I used to have real big I actually legs. did it two weeks ago. It was just a little one for last week. When I was I made it a big <laughs> party daughter. So today's the third time as a charm. Right here. We'll get out video if you do. I'm Scottish. We go off.
gonna hit Come on, the He's gonna go through the hundred. Bang it out. There you go, you're 90. Come on, man. I got staying power, baby. Damn. And that, and I'm really impressed because that means I can count to 100. <laughs> that means I can count to 100. Good. I think you might have Yeah. My groin's hurting. You ought to see us train when we're not injured. for an amateur. I'm getting old. This is the principal from Lee Priest. It's called the fucking stupid principal. I'm trying to train around an injury. the injured leg didn't they hear today? <laughs> Would have been easier just to go heavy and do six. <laughs> I think so. 
Ten. Yeehaw! Ten! Oh, you gotta start somewhere. I don't want to pick a big number in case I ten is great, huh? Let me shoot for six and if I get the ten, that's it. There he goes. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Got to count. Yeah. Just make me up five. Come on. Five. five four. Good man, Lee. Come on. All right. Good show. Push Good it up. Set. <laughs> Good set. Got 30? That was um, more than 10. 40? More than 10. More than 10. Yeah, which is what he wanted to go for, so it's like pretty good. I'm going to try a heavy set now.
man, Lee, come on. Burn those big fucking trunks up. Come on, burn the trunks up. When you're finished with them, you can just leave them there. Isn't that right? Everyone else does. <laughs> I noticed people looking at me strange because I was putting my weights away, so I figured just leave. <laughs> like, what's he doing? Put the dumbbells back on the rack. <laughs> A new concept. I love racks. Especially the one on 183. Alright. yours? So it's 5 a.m., brother. Oh, thanks. That's nice. <laughs> We've all been taking a bite. That's no, okay. <laughs> Tomorrow can you have a different flavour. <laughs> you next?
threw up. He just didn't want to see it on video. Believe me, it take a lot more than you two to make me throw up. Yeah, Many I people have tried. Yeah, he's on the side Even of the Tom Platt's gonna make me throw up. Yeah, on the other side of the track. Yeah, on the hot side. Gonna make me hurt. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not. Roma Rex now. Three, come on. Thank you. 
go heavy on squats and do sixes, but when you go into like the squat like five plates and get to the 20 reps of 20s, then you're like, once that feeling comes, it doesn't get. <laughs> it's like you want to throw off the seat, but like, I can't get it back in. And what pissed me off was when I was doing the tourist was there. Big Fred walked in front of me, took a picture. Oh. Fucking flash in the face. That doesn't put you off at all. That's it, that's, that's that's the quad injured quad battle for the um, battle for the Olympia Expo workout. Battle for the buffet bar workout, that's what it was. I would think felt too short. Oh no posing. If you want to see posing you'll have to wait till I get on stage. Get uh, my name is Gustavo Vadel. I came from Puerto Rico. Uh, I'm 32 years old on uh, November 3rd, 1972. <laughs> What are you doing, Matt? Matt? You next? Beautiful, huh? Talk to you later. Okay. okay, today is like 264, 265. Compared with the last show, I'm like four or five pounds heavier than the line. My last show was uh, Arnold Classic this year. Uh, different uh, last year was like 238 uh, the day of the show of course but uh, this at this time last year was like 245 almost 25 20 pounds heavier yeah but now I know better my physique I know I've been learning a lot more and I know how I can get good conditions without losing any size.
My goal is be better at every show. And the Miss Olympia for me is really important. First is uh, the biggest show, the Miss Olympia of bodybuilding. And uh, this, this is my dream, be the best. Of course, I know there's a lot of good guys competing on that show, but uh, it's like last year, nobody expected me, and I beat third. It, was, it wasn't a gift. I well deserve it because I've been working really hard. This year is not gonna be different. I've been working really hard, very seriously. This is for me, it's my life. I'm very focused. And I know I can be really good this year. I don't wanna, I don't like to predict them any place, but for sure I'm gonna be top with the best of the world because that's what I wanna be, the best. And uh, in comparison with last year, this year's gonna be even more, more good things coming from Gustavo. Condition, everything. Uh, this year, 2005, I won Ironman, and I did third place in Arnold Classic. So people can see there's no, it's not a gift. There's no a lucky day. Gustavo is coming hard, dry, bigger every show. So this year, is they expecting me because they know that I'm very serious about this. I'm not joking. And the bigger guys, watch out because I'm hungry. What you're learning every day about your physique and about your body, every show, you're learning more about how, how your body responds with different diet, different training. And uh, the more important thing, when you know better your physique, you can handle it with best, the, the best that you can, and you can get more size, better condition, better, you, you're more confident this time because you've been, you've been doing a lot of good things and uh, for sure, for sure, it's gonna be even better because that's bodybuilding means. Every show, bigger, better, because you're learning. This is a science and you have to learn your body, you know, to be even better every show. I look like a machine, but I'm not a machine. I'm a human being. If sometimes I need a day off, I take it. I not, I not have a, a perfect schedule like all the bodybuilders. Uh, sometimes train Sunday, Monday, holidays. I don't care. If my body need to rest, I take my day off. If I need, I, I feel that I can train, I go train even twice a day. I do my cardio in the morning. Trying to always lifting heavy weights, my first exercise, my basic exercise always, because they, they can help me to keep the size. Because when, even when you diet, you cut calories, you're trying to keep your, your exercise, at least one, two exercise, two basic exercise, training heavy weight. That's, for me, in my special uh, case, help me to, they helping me to keep more my size. I feel it, I feel bigger, I feel better, even losing fat, but I don't lose muscle. That's what I've been learning from, from last year Miss Olympia until now. Like professional, like eight years. And, um, amateur and professional, 15 years. Competition every year. I start competing 
1990, every year I compete once, twice, three times, depend. Amateur and professional. For me, it's the same. Because you've been training hard, you've been doing diet, this is the same style. I woke up always 6, 6 30 in the morning because I had to take my kids to school. In the same time, I came, I come to the gym and I do my cardio. I do I always prefer doing stair master gallon machine steppers. I love it. It's not easy. It's harder, but you can get more result. And uh, I do my abs in the morning too. At the same time, when I do cardio, and then come back to my home, I take breakfast, and uh, that's my first meal. It's gonna be like eight eight thirty. After my first meal, every two hours, I try to eat just protein and the next meal carbs. Depends how I feel. If I need carbs, I don't use carbs. I try to keep all my protein, you know, chain every meal. For example, if I, I, I did eggs in the morning, trying to use chicken, turkey, fish, and a steak, and then chicken. But never, never do the same, you know, the same, I never do two meals, the same protein. Always trying to change it. And carbs, I do carbs in the morning first time after cardio, of course, to keep my, my, my glucagon balanced, stable. And after workout, I use potatoes, rice, pasta, depend how I feel, depend how many calories I need. That's, that's, that's the more important thing about bodybuilding. You have to feel, you have to feel what your body needs and depend what needs you have to give it whether you know what the body you know go to gonna absorb better always always vegetable is part of my diet even i do six seven meals a day even my breakfast i put it broccoli and zucchini between the egg whites and uh, i eat it always uh it's 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 really good because maybe some person don't, doesn't like it but it's it's we human being if you try maybe you like a little bit maybe every day more 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 now for me it's very important because when I when I do vegetable when I eat vegetable I feel that my protein the absorption is much better my carbs go to the muscle more directly it's like a, you you feel your system always very clean it does help me to assimilate better the, the nutrients. For the first time in my life, I'm doing bodybuilding 100% for the contest, this contest. This is why I tell that it's ha that something to happen for this year, this contest, because in the past, I always worked like personal trainer four, five, six, eight hours a day, because I needed to, you know, pay bills and, you know, my family, keep my family happy and be a bodybuilding is really expensive sport. Now I'm I have another family. I have a muscle tech, they taking care of me. And uh, I can be hundred percent bodybuilder. And everybody watch out because now it's gonna be different. Just just I'm gonna to sleep every night just thinking about next day how how I'm gonna train and I'm gonna be hundred percent every day for this show so you can see the result of this Miss Olympia 2005. And you're gonna see a battle for the Olympia 2005 too, because that's three weeks out for the show.
Hey, you guys, our work is nice. You know, we we love the pain. We bodybuilders, we have to love the pain because body is a sport. Pain means results, means bigger muscle. You know, you have to do it, but be careful. Okay, don't hurt yourself.
Huh? That's it. It's bigger than big. Think it's big enough? Hundred percent natural. Hard work. No fake. No fake. me.
think it's big? You think it's big? I think so. It's big. Almost 23. 22 and a half. It's clean. Okay. Concentration. Dumbbells. This one. Ah. Oh. Good Pulse. What is it? I 
promised to my little girl Barbie Ann taking to Disneyland. I love Disneyland, but unfortunately right now I'm on diet and she understands, she's three years, three years old, and but now she understands that daddy has to compete. But after my contest, the first thing that I'm going to do is take my kids, take my family to Disneyland and, and then share time with them because they support me big time. So now it's time, you know, to give it to them uh, everything that, I, they, that they need. Bodybuilding is a really, really, really good sport. It's more than a sport, it's a lifestyle. I'm respecting all my life. My family respect the sport. They support me, my friends. And uh, this is very good sport for kids, for family, for everyone. So we're gonna try to give in more to the sport, trying to, to protect our sport, our community, because it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not good that other sport that always mentions some something wrong and always trying to take them back to bodybuilding because bodybuilding use a lot of stuff. That's not true. Bodybuilding is very good sport for people, for family, for kids. We have to try to you to respect respect each other because this is our life. And uh, I respect every one of you. I know you like bodybuilding. I love bodybuilding. I, want, I always want to fight for the sport. I always want to be a bodybuilder. Just trying to respect each other. It's not about trying to say something about Gustavo, or about other professionals. We, we, we're doing bad things about the sport. So we want to try to clean it and be happy with the sport, enjoy the sport. It's really nice, beautiful sport. and. Uh, one thing, check it out the Olympia because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm very serious about this. This is gonna be my year, okay? Do some chest today. Put on a little show for you guys today. Do a couple warm up sets, get these old joints going. if it's the cameras but my elbows feeling a little good today just been having a lot of aches and pains lifting so heavy trying to add this, the extra size so as I said as soon as I finish warm up I'm gonna give you guys a little show today because Dexter once asked me he said you don't train too heavy do you so I'll show him show him what I do although after watching Ronnie nothing is heavy Everything else is light, but it's heavy for me, so I'll show you guys. It's another warm-up set. 
pounds. Maybe wait some. Fluctuating between 242 and 245, which is a little heavy for me. And, uh, it's the heaviest I've ever been. Happy with the way I look three weeks out, as of tomorrow. It's gonna be a dog fight. It's gonna be good. What I want is the call outs, you know. To get the call outs, compare me, see how I look. I was going to shave for you mates, but it was either shave or go to bed. Fancy bells with my name on it, man. You know? Look at this thing. Is this right? No, it's not right. Alright. Remember I told you I put in a show for you? Here we go. First set. Go all the way down to the end of the rack. Start with the heaviest.
never a good idea to eat just before you work out, you know? <laughs> Take my top off, miss. See what I <laughs> see what I got. What's up, man? How are you doing? Two, come on. Three, that's it. Four, you got it. Ah, that's one. Come on. So you can claim barbell. Worked out the chest. A little full, huh? What do you think? Right now, as I said, three weeks out, just trying to trying to hold my weight for maybe three, four more days, and uh, and start drying out slowly. But uh, I feel good. 
a good uh as you guys gonna see in a little bit I'll show you what i got what i'm bringing what i'm bringing to the show Still feel that food. It's not a good good idea to eat 10 minutes before you work out. <laughs> Even an amateur knows that. Alright, we're gonna get six. That's it. Woo, come on, come on. All you, all you, all you. Come on, push, push. <clears throat> Woo. Ah. That's what I'm talking about. That one is for you, Dexter, next year. <laughs> well, I'm a lot older than Dexter, so my clock is ticking. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, I could relatively stay in shape and get in shape very quickly. So um, it works in my favor that way. Uh, and when I when I compete a little more often, I'm even more focused all year, you know, because I can't miss at all. Uh, is it smart to do that? It all depends on what works for you as an individual, you know. Some people rather compete once, twice a year and so on, you know, uh, it varies for me, you know, I, I don't start off with a set target, uh, every year is different, you know, I mean, I've competed as much as my first pro show, my first year, 1995, competing about 12 shows, and I've competing as, as least as two shows so far, so it varies, some years five, some years three, some years four, you know, so how much I'm gonna do next year? I don't know, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just focusing on the Olympia right now, but uh, for each, his own. Whatever you like doing, that's what you do. All right. Good for Incline. Incline barbell. Gonna go do some, uh, some Incline flies now, okay? Really work, uh, really keep all the stress in the upper chest right now. Thank you. So we're gonna go back over here. Right. Show you guys the flies. Flies? Yes, sir.
lot of people are talking about. I think I put too much size on, you know, and uh, they like me the way I was before and stuff like that. And it's funny because the way I was before wasn't winning shows, you know. Um, it's like damn if you do, damn if you don't kind of thing. Uh, but you know, it's just a way to carry on. Like I, I add so much size and compromise my my symmetry. Which I don't think I did at all. Uh, and which I still think I need to even add more thickness. And uh, that's the reason why Chris and Dexter and all these guys finish higher because they have the thickness. You know, and uh, I know. Just listen to everyone talk and I just smile. But, uh, I'm Olympia time, you know, I just hope to match up and see what happens. So therefore, we go up. Because as the saying goes, you stay the same, you stay the same. So we did 90, go up to 100. And yep, it is flies we're doing, not presses. It is a hundred. So some of you guys might not want to try this at home. Make sure you <laughs> make sure you got supervision. All right. I'm just playing. Getting those uh, Kevin Lerone delts. <laughs> yeah, probably. Two of my delts is one, one of his, eh? Miss Kevin, the Maryland muscle machine. Yeah, you know. At least some of us could try and make some money now. You know, 
before a set was heavy one. Even your hand hurts. You need a spot? You need no spot. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you know, bodybuilding is bodybuilding is supposed to also be a stepping stone to to probably greater things. So. You know, all these athletes, Sean and Kevin and all these guys, you know, I'm happy to see that they're staying healthy and they're, they're moving on in their life to do different things, you know, Sean, uh, Kevin, you know, with his acting, I hope he, he breaks through and does well, you know, Sean doing all the great things he does now and having a family and uh, talking about promoting shows and doing a lot of fundraising and stuff, it's great to see, you know, so, uh, you know, each athlete's the time gonna come when it's time to hang it up and time to move on and try and do greater things. And it's great to see that, especially when an athlete sort of stay in touch with the sport and try to give something back and so on. So Sean's gonna be promoting a show next year. That'd be great. Uh, I definitely try to put that on my calendar on my plans to do that show. And uh, you know, we we'll see what happens. Got some inclines. Uh, what we got now? Uh, let's do some. Uh, yeah, let's do some. Uh, the class, huh? From the machine. Yeah. Do some machine. Yeah. Let's try and get it tight for the show. You know? More sets here, and uh, that's it. Do a little flexing, and we're done. Normally, I do chest center. It is Friday, but normally, I do chest center on a Tuesday after I'm done doing legs. But uh, and today would normally be my arm day, try some bars along with calves, but uh, since since you were coming, I changed up my training because uh, I know we shot arms, I think, uh, the year before. And that's 03 and then 04. Last year we did um, get shoulders, I think. So I figured I'd do some chest this time around. So you see the things I do? Just for you guys.
That's enough. I think I blew my water on the first exercise. I felt good. I felt the good pump coming on. Then after it was all downhill after that, man. Yeah. Oh well. Some days are like that. I never know if it's the light in here or if it's just me. It never seem to look good in here. Maybe I was, that's why I never take my clothes off. Yeah, but this year has been a good year for me. It's, a, it's been a very pretty busy year. Uh, almost every weekend I had something going on, some gigs, you know, besides competing and so on. So, uh, as most of you guys might have already known or heard, I just signed with Monster Tech, so I'm excited about that. Joined that team of guys and uh, stepped my game up some more, you know. And, uh, you know, just look for greater and better things next year. Trust me, it's going to be good year. Uh, a lot of people ask me, what's the difference in me and my physique this year that made it so much different? It made me improve. It's, it's basically, I I was able to uh, put more time into bodybuilding. You know, before it was always my business first and then bodybuilding. But last year and this year is the first two years of my life actually, of my whole professional career where bodybuilding is now first, my business second. Uh, so that's why you see, you saw a lot more improvements from me this year. So. Next year is going to be even better. So, uh, see what happens next year. All right, let's go see uh, what I got to bring to the Olympia table this year. More complete physique. I'm definitely going to be bigger, fuller. I'm going to be in super shape. So, let's go do some posing. See what I have. Where are we going to go? Well, you know, three, four days out at this point. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a lot of things different. I'm going to manipulate my water a lot more. Um, but it also stems all the way back from your off season. I don't go too crazy and don't go too far off my condition, uh, uh, my pre-contest condition. Um, so when it's time to get ready, I don't have to go crazy trying to get ready. And, um, you know, I did the same thing this year, although I did get heavier. Than I, that I ever gotten before, but um, uh, I'm definitely gonna, the last week of the show, I'm gonna like uh, step it up and do a lot of things different, you know, things that that um, I haven't really done before, you know, just, you know, really manipulating my water and, and uh, you know, just really concentrating on coming in nice and dry and full. I've been competing since, um, since 88, so always, always, uh, bodybuilding is a constant change and Striving for perfection is, is, is a constant change and you're trying to, to get better each time. So yeah, you gotta change something each time. It doesn't matter if you come in one particular show and you, you, you do extremely well. In order to look even better, you gotta change something. And that goes the other way around. If you come in and you didn't look the best that you can, again, of course, you still gotta change something. So it's a constant change trials and errors and you try to eliminate those errors as much as possible yeah yeah it, you know uh, yeah as the years goes on and you get more more uh, years under your belt you're able to succeed in, in as you said eliminating as much errors as possible but um, you know there's always still mistakes to be made and whereby we're all professional and this is the highest level of the game uh, the slightest mistake can mean the difference of you being third to you being 12 you know so there's not a lot of room for errors here, but um, you know, uh, come uh, come October 15th, I'll definitely be ready, 100%. <laughs> Olympia, uh, well, you know that this is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. I mean, this is it. This is the best of the best, and uh, you know, it's fine and dandy to to win other pro shows. You know, it's a big deal to win a pro show, but when you come to the Olympia, you're talking about the best of the best. So, um, you know, if you want to be classified as one of the best in the world, you got to be in this particular group. And to be in this group and do well says a lot. So, the Olympia to me is the, uh, the pinnacle of bodybuilding. So, you know, I'm always excited to be in it. Bodybuilding, bodybuilding, uh, 
bodybuilding almost meant the world to me and I say that because it, it taught me so much in life in general you know it wasn't just building my body was but was building my mind building my confidence building my desire to succeed building my uh, my goal setting skills um, building my patience so when you say bodybuilding it's a total building of my entire body and uh, it, it, it did a lot for me, you know, uh, in my entire career, and that's what brought me to be who I am now, to be uh, doing well, staying healthy, being a, a goal setter, being successful in life, and so on. So uh, it means a lot. Another one and another one. He sees powerhouse now. Okay, get it right. This is it. Ben Francis powerhouse. The man right here. Oh, I'm good. Good, good. Yeah, all right. Yeah, ready. Ready. Good. Good. Yeah, ready. It's good, man. Yeah, it's good. 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 Yeah, my friend Derek Pan's a three-time world kickboxing champion. He's got an MMA studio. There's going to be a cage in here. It's going to be all mixed martial arts. He's got a whole bunch of world champion grapplers in there, too. And just for the regular members that don't want to go in there, we got bags. And I should just put speed bags up now, too. July 1st. Switch July 1st from Goals to Powerhouse. Very happy to be with Powerhouse. Establishes are real nice people. They're great people. Should have been there from the beginning, really. Bulls Gym has got different owners now, and they're going in a different direction, and I want to stay in the direction that we're in. And I'm real happy to be with Powerhouse and where I am now. That's the start. Flat dumbbell press. Quick, fast. With the quick, fast. Still is nice and heavy, okay? We're like going heavy too. Mike Gray and Michael Duncan. Basically, set for set on this. I don't know if they come in those right here. Hi, how's everybody doing? My name is Victor Martinez, New York's very own. Well, now nah, it's Caprice Murray too, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Super, super sex there. Let's see, let's see how I feel as I go along, you know. And premeditate, you know, change. I 
caught that first one, all right? I don't to bullshit too much when I train, so if you don't get much out of me, it's because that's how I am, okay? The Olympia is about three weeks away. Today we'll be doing chest on the road to the Olympia. Uh, make it a hard workout, no less intense than any other workout. It's gonna be tough, it's been a tough road. It's been a tough year, as you've seen, uh, my placings haven't been up to par. Um, but that's just, you know, just as good as your next show in bodybuilding. And this is my next show, and it will be good. It is the Olympia. It, it is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. And, and I'm looking so much forward to it, um, more than ever. I mean, just as much as the first time. I take it as, as it comes, uh, just like the first time. Enjoy the first time every single time, because uh, the opportunity of being the Mr. Olympia stage is just um, uncomparable, uh, uncomparable to anything else. Uh, it's just uh, the feeling of it, just knowing that it's getting closer, it just uh, sets more fuel into your, your body. Uh, you know, they have these uh, new restrictions uh, for the men. I uh, won't mention anything about the women, but the men um, have to come in with that classical V-taper. Uh, no more bloatiness. I mean, that should have been bodybuilding from the get-go. I guess they lost track of it, and, and it's great that they're coming back to it, and they lost light of it, but as long as they're shining the light on it now, again, it's great. Uh, I started my diet about 12 weeks ago. By the time I finish in three weeks, it'll be about a 15-week diet. My weight right now is about 260. I'm looking at competing in the, in the high 240s mid 240s um definitely my condition has been the, the factor in order to placing high i look forward to it um uh, just the, the motivation of it all and just you know I, and these other shows that i've done like i've mentioned you know the condition wasn't there but there's always mishaps they do happen and and hopefully this time i, I got it down packed to the t you know, my diet did change a little, my, the way I train, um, more cardio definitely added. I'll be doing cardio at the end of this workout. And uh, basically that's it, you know, let's go for it. Um, I'm, I'm working with Chris Asado, um, Gino Sylvain from Genetics. Um, people like to say things, um, you know, like maybe Chris doesn't know how to work with me and stuff like that. They keep bringing up United Champions, but I like to tell everybody, forget United Champions. That was three years ago. You know, new time, new era, new show. A new feeling and, and, and a new drive within me. So, um, definitely look, uh, love working with him. We make a great team. You know, as far as my diet goes, uh, you'll see it on stage, the results. I'll tell you about 3,500 calories a day. Yeah, mostly protein, mostly protein, I would say. Um, right now, I'm, I'm still eating fish, just not as many meals. I mean, maybe one to two meals of fish. I found out by me eating too much fish, where they get me too stringy or it didn't make me hold on to the, the quality muscle that I needed and, and therefore making me look flat and, and and definitely not not great looking, you know? So the whole fish deal has definitely changed. I go by what I like, what I like to eat, you know, the kind of fish I like to eat. 
uh, the kind of way I like to eat it, the day, the time of day I like to eat it. So, so definitely I'm not going fish crazy, you know, all these uh, five, six meals of fish. I think it's just absurd, you know, to do it that way. That it, it worked out great when I was younger, but my body has changed and I do need more of a stronger kind of protein for my body to hold. So I definitely did change that and, and my carb intake has been to a minimum. As you can see, my energy's up and, and I'm only eating about one carb meal a day and, and it's just, the energy, uh, people ask me where does it come from and it's just uh, the drive, the drive to doing the best show in the world, the, the drive to do the Mr. Olympia, okay? No, well, I'm doing about maybe 60 grams a day of carbs. It's cool, I don't mind. It gives you a little high feeling. Just take the high feeling and convert it into positive energy. <laughs> Fat count, uh, I'm sorry I didn't do my homework, so I don't know my fat count right now, but it is pretty low. <laughs> yeah, I take flaxseed oil. Definitely flaxseed oil, and the, you know, the fish has the fat in it and the chicken, but no extra fat as far as peanut butter or anything of that sort. So much fun, that's it. This show, it's gonna be a great show. It's like always, I'm sure, I mean, watching it as a spectator, totally different. I mean, now it's just, I mean, it's not fun in games. People say have fun, but, you know, I mean, I mean fun is something different. It's a serious, this is one in a lifetime, and, uh, you know, I don't know where to get fun from. The aftermath is fun, you know, but just, you know, people say just have fun, it's not a joke, you know, it's not a joke. It's only one Mr. Olympia per year, unless you keep on repeating it, you know. Chest work. So I think I'll combine these last two. Uh, Thank you. Also add pullovers for the end. So there'll be some decline, some cable crossovers. 
don't want to leave any angle out from the chest area, you know? Hey, this is Ronnie Coleman approval, right? <laughs>
Get mad, you know. And the shirt on over here. This is for you. That's why. For you. Alright, it's gonna be the last round over here, and then we'll pull overs. The same time, I saw Lee Haney's chest, and they had uh, Muscle and Fitness. They have all the Olympians lined up. They had Lee Haney, he's the only one with the big uh, upper chest. I was like, man, I want that. You know? So, read a couple of his articles. I saw he emphasized a lot of incline. And I always started at least with two incline exercises. I, I always alternate. So, today I do one incline. Next time I do chest, I do two incline exercises. Usually a, a fly dumbbell. I'm an incline press, so I guess I might just stick to Smith. You know, your body's smart, you get used to it, so I'm gonna keep changing. But definitely uh, incline flies, not just incline presses. You gotta have those flies there too for your upper chest. Sets, you know, just always do that with chest, and so I felt over the years uh, my weakest body parts or lagging, I would say, would be my rear delt. So I always add a little something at the end of the chest. So we got about three sets of that, and yeah, all right, right now, uh, two more sets. Oh, it feels good now because I'm done, because it gets me closer. Where I want to be. As far as the show goes, it's been closer to the show. Every time I'm through, that's all I'm thinking. Another day. Another day. I try to make it fun. I might not show it. I don't see a big smile, but I'm very happy. Satisfaction. It's finished, dude. <coughs>
No, I don't do crystal light. I think it's uh, well over promoted. Um, I think people is lazy. No mind drinking the water. It's actually uh, blue to me in there. I don't do crystal light, so it's just way too much neutral sweet, you know. And I count the neutral sweet that I eat. Usually, um, I might use it on my oatmeal. That's about it. But I don't believe in OD and neutral sweet. And plus, I, I believe crystal light is too addictive. It gets to a point where you can't stop drinking it. And it's, it's like anything else, if I feel like I have no control. Feel there's no need for it because it's controlling you. you need to be in charge it's bodybuilding total charge couple of riddles and cardio Pulls down, the cardio, can you that out, let's do this, if you noticed uh, last year for the Road to the Olympia I started over at my gym, um, my gym is no more because of many uh, things that didn't work out as far as having money, uh, people backing me up, you know it's always a problem people backing me up, you know so Whoever you usually see me with, they're the ones who are backing me up, you know, and uh, it, it's just sad because it happened during the week of the Olympia, um, right before I, I got on the plane and left. Um, I'm not quitting, just like the other shows I've done. Um, it's just a mishap and you keep moving on. You can't mope on it. You know, I gave the neighborhood a chance. Uh, I gave myself a chance. And, and I look forward to getting myself another one, opening a, another gym in the near future.
Welcome to the newly expanded Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym here in Syosset, New York. This is Tara, our 11 year old daughter, and this is Haley, she's nine. Our hours are 24 hours, Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We just renovated the gym again. We just added just a more cardio, a circuit only training, and also mixed martial arts run by three-time world kickboxing champion Derek Panza and come on in. Um, I started off uh, my uh, athletic career in track and field for the Australian uh, team. I competed in shot put, uh, javelin and uh, reserve on the 100 meter, 400 by 100 meter relay. Um, from there I went into powerlifting and I achieved six world powerlifting championships. I was undefeated in any powerlifting competition at any level. Uh, I was the first woman to bench press over 300 pounds. And uh, then moving through the movie, Pumping Iron to the Women, I came into bodybuilding and achieved the uh, World Professional Bodybuilding Women's title and competed in the Miss Olympia for three third places and two second places. When I came to New York to shoot um, the movie Pumping Iron 2, The Women, uh, Steve actually met me at the airport and uh, we quickly became friends. Uh, he helped me train. Uh, he also helped me relax and took me to a couple of shows in the city. Uh, pretty soon we became inseparable um, as friends and as the movie was shot and developed, um, we fell in love. And so after a brief time back in Australia, um, I came back to be with Steve. The uh, movie was shot in 1983. I moved back here in 84. In 85, we were married. We're about to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary this month. I'm Craig Richardson. I'm here at uh, Bev Francis Powerhouse here in Syasset, New York. Um, today's date is the 25th of September. I'm a little under three weeks out from the Mr. Olympia. Um, going to kick some serious butt this year. There's a lot of guys that, you know, placed ahead of me last year that won't be placing ahead of me this year. Uh, me and my training partner made sure that we trained a lot harder, uh, we lift a lot heavier, and I ate a lot more food. So look for a better, bigger and better, better package uh, October 15th, Las Vegas. Well, uh, today I'm... 225, um, a lot harder than I was three weeks out last year. I'm actually a lot harder than I was a week out from last year uh, at, at this week, and uh, yet I'm still three weeks out. So I just have uh, a little bit of water to get rid of. There's no body fat. Um, last year I competed at a little over 210. This year I'm looking to compete maybe a little under 220. So, you know, hopefully this is it. Uh, I can make a big name for myself this year. Um, we're really expecting some big things, and, you know, let's just see what happens. Well, yeah, this year, uh, you know, last year was a little overwhelming. I uh, didn't really know what to expect. Everything was so new to me, um, and it took a little while before all that sunk in. But now, you know, this is my second Olympia. I know exactly what to expect. Uh, you know, I know the routine now. Uh, I'm not new, so you know I'm gonna get out there and give everything I have to this show. Oh, the extended belly uh, rule, that definitely works for me. Uh, I'm definitely using that to my advantage. Uh, that and you know I have a small waist. I don't have the extended belly, um, and my the other strengths, my symmetry, my conditioning, you know all those things uh, that they're finally enforcing now. It definitely plays into my hand. Well, you know, uh, I actually, the last week before the contest, I actually start uh, carb depleting. Um, you know, in the past, I've gotten some help from, you know, a lot of great athletes such as uh, Dexter Jackson, 
and uh, Don Long. They've uh, been nice enough to help me out with contest prep. But there's, you know, certain things they do that really doesn't work for Craig Richardson. You know, what makes uh, Dexter Jackson a great bodybuilder um, is because he knows his body. And I think this year I finally got to know my body. And, um, you know, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Of course, I'm going to use some of the advice that they've given me because it is great advice. But the last couple of days I'm going to do uh, what always got me in the best shape. And that's... Uh, that's a secret, but <laughs> you'll see on the day of the show. I, I, I'd like to uh, thank Don Long for a lot of that. He uh, actually, you know, told me how I'll have to eat. Of course, I always knew I had to eat a lot, but once he, you know, sat me down and explained everything to me, um, you know, it became more clear. And uh, normally I would take in about 5,000 calories a day, and I found out that that wasn't enough for me. Um, I had to take in close to 10,000 calories. Uh, within a four-week period, I went from 230 to 257, um, you know, and it was all clean food. Uh, there was no junk involved. There was, uh, you know, I had no sugar, kept my fat low, but I just increased the calories and, you know, and it was all with good food. So, you know, I really contribute a lot of my weight gains and a lot of the progress that I've had this off season to that. Uh, it was about seven times a day, every two and a half hours. And I would eat, you know, for example, in the morning it would be 15 egg whites with three yolks, uh, two cups of oatmeal. Uh, two and a half hours later, it would be a pound of steak with two cups of rice. And it just kept going on and on and on throughout the day. Three cans of tuna, two cups of rice. I mean, it was just, you know, it was painful. It was hard to breathe. My back was killing me. Uh, but I knew it was worth it in the long run, you know, once it all came off you know, there'll be a, a better, bigger package. Oh no, it was, <laughs> it was hard. Sometimes I ate, I would, uh, it would take me about 45 minutes to an hour sometimes to get a meal down. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, days where I would gag during the meals uh, and I had to force it down. Uh, but, you know, I just kept thinking about what I had to do and uh, making things better for my family. So, you know, that was my motivation. I just kept going. And I always feel like, I'm, you know, there's a lot of good people behind me trying to help me out, uh, such as my training partner and other, you know, friends that I have. And I feel like if they're putting all their time and effort, you know, into me, um, these guys don't have to be behind me. You know, uh, my training partner is a criminal defense attorney. He can easily walk away from this thing tomorrow, but he sticks by me and, um, you know, I feel like I'm letting him down also if I don't get the meals down. So, you know, that, those are the mo things that motivate me, you know, uh, and keep me going throughout the day to make sure I finish the meals. Actually, right now, my metabolism is like super fast, so I cut down the food, I cut it down to about 6,000 calories a day or a little under, uh, and that's actually dieting. And, you know, I still, have to watch it because my weight will drop so fast sometimes that I'll have to bring it up, you know, I have to uh, monitor it every day. There's some days where I won't change my diet at all, but I'll end up losing three pounds. So, you know, those days I'll bring my carbs up a little bit, you know, and uh, put, put another pound or so on. But, it, you know, it gets really tough. You know, some people think, oh, you know, you're blessed with a fast metabolism, but sometimes it's a curse also. Oh, carbs would every single meal uh you know i i've tried that you know before the low carbs um my at the end my condition was no better or nor was it any worse but you know i was a few pounds lighter so if i can hold on to an extra five or six pounds by keeping my carbs in and then just taking them out a little bit at the end you know that works better for me that's it I'll work these guys now. Outwork them. Let's go. Come on. Ah, good. I need four now. Ain't nothing here, Craig. Ain't nothing here now. Let's go. Come on. That's it. All you. I'm not here. Oh. Good.
My name is Harley Bright. I have the very good fortune to be not only friend, but training partner to IFBB professional bodybuilder Craig Richardson. And that's a pleasure and a privilege. I've been his training partner for the last seven years. And I can tell you that the most impressive thing about Craig is not even his physique, it's not even his determination to diet and train the way he does, but it's his commitment to his family. And bodybuilding needs to start focusing on guys who are well-rounded and have a commitment to family and have good values. There's too much emphasis on guys who are out there doing the wrong things. Bodybuilding is supposed to be a healthy, productive lifestyle. You look at Craig and you realize he's married, he has three kids, and he dedicates his time to his family. He never neglects his family for bodybuilding. And that's something that needs to be focused on. And sooner or later, these companies that are sponsoring all these guys and putting them in all the magazines and paying them so much money, they're going to want somebody to represent them that's a good role model. I don't know why that hasn't happened, but I'm hoping there's a company out there smart enough to realize that good role models, in the end, pay a bigger dividend to guys who are out there getting in trouble. Well, you know, I'm not a bodybuilder or anything. I just have the good fortune of training with them. But Craig always tries to help me improve my physique. Uh, I'm a criminal defense attorney by trade, so, you know, my time is somewhat limited. But the time I do devote to the gym, Craig is always helping me improve myself, just like he will anybody who comes up to him. He's very affable. He's a very personable uh, guy. He has no attitude. There's no air about him. He's not arrogant. If you come up to him and you ask him a question, he'll gladly answer it. He'll sign autographs. I have a charity that I run that's designed to promote the welfare of mentally challenged children. And Craig always comes to our events. He always brings all his photos. He signs them for all the kids. He takes photographs with all the kids. He'll flex his bicep and let them touch it. They get a big kick out of that. So, um, you know, Craig is out there doing things for everybody, not just me as training partner, but for everybody. And I think that's important. That's it. Work the legs now. Work the legs. All of you. Sweet. Come on. Boy, see this? You probably won't want a part of me on October 15th. Believe me. This is where the real boys do it. And this is how hard we really train. So if you ain't training this hard, I don't think you want to show up. Believe me. Same thing now. Legs aren't tired, Craig. You're going to work today. You're going to work today. All legs, baby, all legs. Come on, now. these guys are done, Craig. These guys are done. Good, Craig. That's it. Now you're working. You're working today. 
That's all you. Big. Good. Come on now, you gotta work today, again. You gotta work. Woo! I'm good. I gotta get some hamstrings. Hams? Yeah. Oh yeah? Oh well, yeah, this is the last, uh... Oh. Gotta get the glycogen out. Ugh. I just want to thank my fans for sticking by me. Uh, it's been a rough few years. Uh, things are definitely getting better. And, you know, also, I won't let them down. Um, they're going to see bigger and better things come from me, you know, in the years to come. You know, I'm 31 years old. I'm going to be around for a while. And, you know, they will see me among the elite uh, in the sport. You know, if not this year, then next year, I'm definitely going to be around. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm just going to get better and better. So I just want to thank all you guys out there that's been behind Team Richardson all these years uh, for being behind me and supporting me and what I do. Oh, man, I'm, you know, with the new rules, you know, I'm predicting top six. I'm going out there. I'm putting, uh, you know, I'm putting some heads on the chopping block. Um, you know, there are a few guys that are favorites that, you know, uh, that you're just not going to beat. You know, Ronnie, there's no one beating him in muscularity. Um, you know, so there's just certain guys that no matter what, their names uh, will carry them. Um, but these guys have great physiques also. But there are a few guys that beat me last year that definitely, you know, um, that I felt they could have went either way. Uh, but their names were bigger. They had bigger contracts, so on and so forth. Uh, but this year, you know, I'm going to come in looking so different that I can't be overlooked. I can't be denied. A top six spot. Good.
Gel. Yok. Well, uh, I carry my food with me, but we'll usually go to a diner afterwards, and uh, I'll order two porterhouse steaks. Uh, I'll get those both down. By the time I get home, it'll be almost time to eat again. So, you know, the rest of my day is eating, 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 and then more eating. So uh, hopefully this will be over soon. I'll be victorious. And we'll start for next year. Okay, same thing now. Okay. Good, Craig, good. We need this now. Let's work it. Let's work what we need. Good, all you. I'm not here. Come on. You don't need me. Oh. Me, myself, not including my wife with three kids, about 150 a week. All together, a little over 300 a week probably for food. So, yeah, gets a little crazy. Let's go, Craig. And that is it. See you October 15th. Approaching slight left turn. Approaching destination on the right. You have arrived. See you again. What's up, Mitch? It's an honor, you know, I'm getting ready for the Olympia. You know what I mean? Of course, there's a battle for the Olympia. So I'm here with my workout partner, Branch, you know, which he just won his first show. Also, which is awesome. We talked about uh, coming in one and two at our upcoming shows and stuff like that. And now it's starting to happen. And hopefully we can keep this going. You know, but, you know, we're going to switch it around, though. You know what I mean? We don't want to be <laughs> number two all the time, believe me. But, you know, it's all in competition. It's all good. It was a great battle. Um, you know, this is pretty much a, 
even though this isn't my debut or this isn't my first time going to the Olympia, it feels like it because I've been working with uh, Tom uh, Prince and Charles Glass. You know, Tom's been doing my nutrition and uh, Charles, I've been going out visiting him like one week out of a month. I'll go out and stay with him at his place and train him at uh, Venice. So it's been very motivating. Um, and uh, just Tom helped me out. I had a, a few rough years, you know, a lot of stuff happened in my personal life and stuff like that, but no excuses. I just, you know, went off the trail. You know what I mean? Now I got myself back together, really focused. I'm having a really great year. I got second in Toronto also. That was, that's what qualified me for the Olympia, um, just like I did uh, last year. But, um, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a totally different body. I got a totally different look going on. Um, it'll look even better here at the Olympia. Um, we're tweaking it a little bit as we go. We're having fun. It's actually fun for me, even though it's always a blessing. And, you know what I mean? I always thank God for it. And, you know what I mean? It's awesome to you know, get up every morning and be able to do what you want to do in the train, do cardio, you know, eat right, that's kind of hard, but, um, you know what I mean, it's just a little bit of sacrifice you have to do to do something you want to do, you know, in your life, so it's it's really awesome, um, but uh, getting with these guys is one of the best decisions I've made in my life right now, and uh, it's going really well, and uh, this is going to be like the first Olympia, you know, it's like what I should have been doing when, you know, the first uh, couple years I turned pro, um, where I got off the trail, you know, I'll do this year what I should have been doing, you know, a couple years ago. So we'll see you know, how it goes. I'm feeling good about it. Yeah, I uh, started training with them in uh, around March of this year. I've been training with them, getting ready for the Toronto show. Um, that's why I look so well and look, did very well at the show. Um, I got second last year, which i done it myself, and I got second, but it was a whole different look this year and a lot easier also. Um, so... You know what I mean? And then the, the Europa show is one of my, you know, even better look there. And then Olympia is just going to be out of sight. You know, I can't wait uh, to bring it on stage and uh, I'm really ready to go. Well, like I said, I had uh, a rough few years and I, I pretty much got off the trail. So it's just to get refocused, get back, you know, you know, get your mind right. You know, I was thinking of this, that and the other thing and not focusing on my career and what I really wanted to do and what I really had been dreaming about. You know, you know, my whole life, I, you know, I got, you know, I lost sight of that. And just getting with these guys, you know, and got they got me back on the right trail. I'm motivated again, and I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? You're, you know, you're always there like, man, you know, I know I'm good enough. I know I can do it. You know, I just need to, you know, you know, hone it in, like, you know, finish it out strong or whatever. And you just miss it here and there. And it's just been frustrating. You know, it's fun getting ready for them, but it's frustrating when you get there and you don't do what you plan to do. You know, or you don't reach your goals. So, you know, those days are over and behind me. And I'm not worried about them now. We're going from this day forward, you know. So, yeah, I'm ready to go, like I said. Come on. Just like, take it like, all day. Come on. Nice. Nice. Come on, come on, yep, come on, yep, 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 come on, come on, Well, I tore my, uh, I partially tore my Achilles uh, on my left leg, so my left ankle. So I still was pursuing the meet. Like I said, I was going to do a 2400, and that's where I was going. My spots were going really heavy. I think I got under like uh, 850 something, and I lost my balance, you know, because of my Achilles. I don't ha I have <laughs> too much balance. So after that, I was like, I think I better give it up, you know what I mean, and wait and get this uh, fixed and heal before I pursue it again. So it's not over with. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of time and getting healed up. And in the meantime, I'm going to kick some ass doing bodybuilding. Then you know, once I heal up and feel good, I'll go back to piloting and kick some ass there too. So. My name is Branch Warren. We're in Southlake, Texas at my gym, Maximum Fitness. Today is uh, September the 26th. 
I am uh, currently uh, five days out from uh, the Charlotte Pro Show, and uh, yep. almost uh, almost three weeks out from the Mr. Olympia, in my Mr. Olympia debut. I'm from Texas originally. I was born uh, in February of 1975. Um, I've been in Texas my entire life. I actually grew up in the country on a cattle ranch in uh, West Texas. Uh, we moved here when I was in the uh, eighth grade. Thank God. And uh, I've been uh, been in the Dallas Fort Worth area ever since. I got into working out. Uh, I guess when I was a freshman in high school, I played was um, that summer. Um, started working out so I could play football. I needed to gain some weight and get stronger. So I wanted to make the high school team. And uh, I met a bodybuilder at a local gym, and uh, he showed me how to train. Showed me the basics, how to train, train hard, and uh, how to eat right. And uh, this local bodybuilder turned out to be a Ronnie Coleman's workout partner. And so about a year later, he started taking me to Metroflex in Arlington. And uh, when I was about 16, and uh, so I was very fortunate to uh, train under these guys, uh, Ronnie and Ron Dobson, who owns Metroflex. And uh, all through my teenage years, I trained at Metroflex for about seven years until I was through college. And uh, I actually went to college at uh, the WTA there in Arlington and, uh, for a couple of years before I transferred to another college. And, uh, so I was there for about seven years under some of the best in the world. They gave me a very firm, strong foundation from the very beginning. Nice. Push. Push. Come on. Come on. Five more. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up. Up. Nice. Yes. I trained at uh, all over the place. I trained at World's Gym for a little bit, which is, and then I've uh, been at Stroud's for a uh, about five years, six years, I've been training at Stroud's, and uh, we still go over there and work out some, and uh, we alternate between here, my place once a week, and Stroud's the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. I did some powerlifting in the past, and uh, my workout partner, Johnny, he's a real big powerlifter, one of the, probably one of the strongest bodybuilders around right now, and uh, so uh, we started training together right after we both won the Nationals in 2001. And um, our workout philosophies and styles are basically the same, so it just uh, worked out very well. Yes, it's been a very good, uh, very good team. I've been a trainer with that uh, type of intensity probably since I was a teenager. So uh, it's enabled me to make uh, make some tremendous gains in the past two or three years. Uh, yeah, for the most part, uh, we trained together. I think for this last show, we didn't train together for the past eight weeks. But then uh, right after the show was over, we uh, started training together. We're going to train together for the Olympia, and I think for the Arnold this next year. Um, as far as our training, we uh, go heavy and hard. I won my first contest when I was 16, after about a year of working out. I won the Teenage Mr. Texas. Uh, after that, I won a couple other local 
teenage shows. Then I went on to a, when the Teenage Mr. America when I was 17. I won the Teenage Nationals when I was 18. I won the Mr. Texas when I was 19. Uh, after that, I took a couple years off to go to school. And I didn't compete again until I was about 23, 24. I won the uh, Southwest USA, which qualified me for the uh, USA in Vegas. I went there uh, in 2000, and um, I got third place in the heavyweights. Um, I suffered an injury right after that. Uh, so um, in 2001, I went to the Nationals and won my weight class and turned pro. After that, I did the Atlanta Champions. Uh, did the GNC last October, got fourth place, and then I just won my first show, Europa Super Show here in Dallas. You know, I don't, I just don't focus on myself like I do any other show. I, my focus isn't any different now than it was when I was 18 years old. I, uh, I get up every morning, I look in the mirror, and I'm very realistic with what I need to improve, and, um, what my strong points are, and what I need to do. And, uh, I, don't, I couldn't tell you everybody that's even competing in the show in Charlotte in five days. I don't know, I don't care. I focus on myself to make myself the best I can be. And nothing else outside of that, I can't control it, so I'm not going to think about it or even concern myself with it. Um, as far as Olympia, it's a dream come true. Every bodybuilder that's ever stepped on a stage, I think that's their ultimate goal is being the Mr. Olympia. So this is uh, 15 years of hard work coming to being realized. Um, I'm very excited, I'm very pumped about being there, but uh, I just take it one day at a time. And I know what I need to do, I make it through the day, and then I get tomorrow, and I know what I need to do tomorrow. So I just focus on, I'm more focused on my nutrition and training than I've ever been. And um, so I'm getting ready for the biggest show in the world. And it's 15 years of, uh, of work to get me to this point. So um, that's how I do it. My day, uh, on a typical day, I get up about 4.15 in the morning. Um, I get up, I um, come to the gym, I'll do cardio. Um, I'll take a shower, get cleaned up here. Uh, eat, eat, start eating my first meal after that. Um, I'm while work, training people and running the gym, usually until about 12 o'clock every day. Around 12.30, that's when I go and I work out myself. Work out, um, I do another cardio session after my workout. I go home, eat, shower up, come back to work around 5 or 6 o'clock. I've got clients and sit here at the gym until about 8 o'clock, 8.30 every night. Then I go home and I crash out and get up and do it again the next day. I'm not one of those people that can sit around all day and you know, veg on the couch or whatever. I, I, uh, I think I do better. The busier I am, the better I do. So, uh, especially when I'm training for a show. So I can't just uh, lay around the house all day and wait for my next meal. If I, I gotta be up doing, working and doing something. Mm -hmm. I train people here. I've, um, I don't train as many people as I used to because of, uh, I have uh, several guys that work for me now, other trainers, and uh, you know, I've got a lot of other responsibilities. But yeah, I still uh, there have some clients that have been with me for four, five, six years that I still train. On, on Maximum Fitness, I'll be opening up uh, this location about a year and a half ago. That's done very well. Uh, as soon as the Olympia's over, I'm going to start looking for a second location. I'm about to expand and have uh, another location. Uh, Long-term goal is to have uh, five locations around the Metroplex. And then we'll uh, start venturing outside the Metroplex after that. That's because uh, of the location. South Lake is a very uh, upscale location. Uh, I income area. We're inside of an executive office suite. Because we're, we're a personal training studio, we're not a regular gym. Uh, everybody that comes to this gym has to have a personal trainer. Um, all the trainers work for me, you know. So it's a little bit different atmosphere than uh, you know, what I, I grew up with and what I work out in. You know, I, I love Metroflex, I love Strouds. And, uh, that's, uh, that's the kind of place I like to work out at. This is a little bit different. Most people, uh, I realize most people don't want to be bodybuilders, and at least not hardcore professional bodybuilders, and they don't, you know, the people that come in here are housewives and executives and Know, professionals that uh, they're not looking to uh, work out until they bleed or sweat or puke. So uh, it's a little bit different, uh, a little bit different atmosphere. Here we go. Mm. 
Season hardcore coming here. So, like I said, I'm five days out from the show. We're both about three weeks out from the Olympics. So, uh, my kind of just we cut back a little bit today in our sets, mainly because of my contest this it's Saturday. But, uh, it's nobody's doing this this close to a show. Doing a little more than I anticipated <laughs> on doing, but I'd like to make the most of it. Olympics look good. Definitely. And thank you, Mitch, always. It's always a pleasure. pleasure. 
Definitely. My fans have been awesome. Uh, thanks for all you guys that emailed me. I did um, an interview with bodybuilding.com also, and they uh, put it up there, and I got a lot of response from that, and a lot of comments, and a lot of stuff I need to improve, and stuff like that, and I appreciate, you know, uh, people looking out, and you know, listening and stuff like that. It's awesome everywhere I go. Um, I just went to Toronto and guest pose and that was awesome. Um, you know what I mean? Like I always tell people, when you see me just, you know, come and, you know, say hello or just, you know what I mean? Re you know, relax and just say what's up or whatever. You know, it's cool. Um, I'm just excited to meet them as they are me. So it was just cool. If it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't have this sport. This, this sport wouldn't exist or any other sport. You know, if it wasn't for the fans, so you mean a whole lot, and I appreciate everything. So hopefully at the Olympia, like I said, I'm gonna try to bring a new package, a new look, and uh, we gonna kick some ass and go from there. I don't really count calories. Uh, when I was younger, I used to count every little gram of calorie and carb and everything I took in. I, I, I do count my protein and ensure that I get enough protein every day. Uh, my protein intake's around 550 a day, 550 grams a day. Uh, as far as a diet, uh, I cut a plate uh, the last uh, last week or so, about a week and a half before the show, I cut a plate very hard. Uh, I started adding carbs back in on Wednesday before the contest, and slowly fill back up. Um, you know, cardio, I um, do a lot of cardio, you know, for an hour to hour and a half, depending on how I look. I just uh, judge it, judge by how I look in the mirror, how, I, how much cardio I do. And that's pretty much it. I've been doing it long enough. I know my own body, so I just, uh, if I need a little more or something, a little less or something, I just make adjustments accordingly. Now, I've always done it by myself, um, pretty much. Um, no one knows my body better than me. Uh, some people, uh, they work with, you know, gurus or whatnot, and uh, it works well for them. Uh, I never have. Um, so far, I've been very successful doing it on my own. So I think as a bodybuilder, everybody has to find out what works for them the best. You know, once you get it down, stick to it. Get a winning formula and stick to it. Yeah, you know, I won't say thank you to all the fans. I think I've gained a lot of fans in the past year, year and a half. I've got a lot of exposure. Uh, hopefully, I won't let you down in three weeks, and uh, I'm going to have fun. See you in Vegas. What's going on? Hey, In the way it out? Yeah. It's sirloin? Yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. And affect me in no way. Uh, if that affect anybody, that affect pretty much everybody. Everybody pretty much got a extended stomach from eating so much. For the most part, it's all about just holding your stomach in. So when you say the extended stomach, what are you really talking about? To my, uh, you got to have more control of holding it in pretty much because if you look at it in the pictures anybody when they was doing them uh, like a front last spread or front bicep nobody's stomach is really sticking out because everybody's controlling it then so 
All I, all I, can, all I can get out of that is, is the guy that ain't holding his stomach in needs to start holding his stomach in. Well, it, it, it's real special to me to uh, be able to tie his record up and all that kind of stuff, but as far as uh, doing something different to, you know, make sure I achieve that goal, I already know how to win the show, so I just pretty much do what it takes to win <laughs> for the most part. So, I mean, after you, once you find a win, winning formula for something, you don't really, you don't go away from it. You continue to do what it took to get to, to get you to win all those other titles. And so I'm pretty much doing the same thing that I've always done, even including the training. Not, yeah. So nothing really, tra nothing really changed. I still train, you know, real hard, heavy, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I didn't change anything up for, you know, uh, trying to win this show. I pretty much do what it takes to, w to win for the most part. I have a sign up saying if you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. So I just continue to do the same thing that I always did. So I can get the same results I always got, for the most part. Just a Bentley GT, about 180. It's what it didn't cost that much. I got that one, those three, three, what those four hundred thousand dollars one. Mine pretty cheap. <laughs> I got the cheap version of that. <laughs> but the gym, my gym was 150, so. Three, I got, you know, the Hummer, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Escalade in, in that car, in the Bentley. So I got three all together. Time to get the show on the road. Five hundred fifty-two horses, twin turbocharged, zero to sixty, about four point four. <laughs> Top speed two hundred ten miles an hour. So it'll fly. <laughs> Good job, boss. 
prayer for the back. Yep. Last prayer for the back. Yep. I mean, he stopped his uh, car to put him like the door. Yeah. How much is it? 295.
know what they have. I was going to do I know. I know. I said, I'm going to get I said, that man smile more. like, damn, I'm off my day. I know. I got to go. Well, 
My name is Quincy Taylor. I'm a 2001 Mr. USA winner. Uh, it's my fourth year competing. Uh, it's my fourth year I've finally qualified for the Mr. Olympia um, from Las Vegas, of, uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up right in Las Vegas. Um, went to Rancho High School. This is a homecoming for me. A lot of my friends and family are going to see this. Um, I've been competing for over 15 years. Very excited about doing this show. Big deal for me. It's my first time qualifying coming in somewhere around 305, 303 hopefully. My birthday is 7, 12, 6, 9. I'm 36 years old. I started doing competing when I was 15 years old, the first uh, bodybuilding show. I've, I've been training with weight since I was 12, but I started competing in bodybuilding when I was 18 at Lonnie Tiefer's show at college at Cal State Los Angeles. First bodybuilding show I ever did that I, I won. Um, I've been competing ever since I caught that bug, but I've been training with weights even long before that. I was benched 425 when I was 16. I was leg pressing 1,000 pounds when I was 16. You know, when you're that young, you can do all kinds of things. I got into the sport when I first um, saw on stage at my first bodybuilding show the year before when I was in college. I saw my first pro bodybuilder, which was Sean Ray, on stage posing um, at Cal State Los Angeles, which one of my friends was competing in. And Lonnie Teeper was the MC. He was also the weight training coach there. And I saw Sean Ray on stage, and then I realized that's what I wanted to do. But even before that, when I first started training with, training with weights when I was 12, I had all the pictures on the walls in my room. Muhammad Akawa, uh, Samir, uh, Lee Haney. I had, Lee Haney wasn't around at that time, but even back then I had their pictures on Beth Francis. I had those pictures on my walls in my room when I would train with weights. And that's what really got me into it. I've always been stuck into it even since I was a kid. Steve Reeves movies. <laughs> I watched all that stuff, The Incredible Hulk. I watched all those things when I was a child and I grew up idolizing the muscle of some of those people and that's what I wanted to be. Lonnie Teeper used to put on this uh, small bodybuilding show uh, called the Cal State LA Bodybuilding Championships. Uh, he put that on every year. It was a very small show, like no more than six or seven contestants in the men. And he still does, he's got a collegiate show now, but back then it was a very small show. And that was the first show that I did, and I won that show. And that's when I caught the bug. Once I won one, I just wanted to keep that same feeling. Uh, for any of you who've never done a show before, and you probably look at some of us bodybuilders like we're you know, not that intelligent or something's wrong with some of us. But the thing is, is once you win a show, that feeling that you get on the stage from winning is uh, one of the greatest highs that you could ever have in your life. It's uh, better than any drug you could probably ever find on this earth. The only thing better than that is watching my kids being born. Other than that, there's nothing else that really compares to the high that you get when you win one of those shows. It's like a total achievement of, of pushing your body to a limit and reaching the goal that you tried to obtain. And to win the Olympia is probably, <laughs> it's probably even 100 times better than what I've ever felt. So, so you, you're constantly looking for that high, and that's why you push yourself in this sport the way that, the way that we do. I left Venice area as soon as I turned pro in 2001. We moved out to the valley out in uh, California, out to um, Granada Hills. Then we moved to West Hills. I was buying property. I bought several homes. When I turned professional, I started making decent money from some of the film work I did and then from the guest posing, things like that. So I started buying properties. I bought several properties in Los Angeles out in the valley. And uh, up until last year, right after the Night of Champions, last year I placed, I had a horrible, horrible year last year. Um, I worked on that film Be Cool all for six months and had a lot of things going on with uh, my children, family, um, the houses were strangling me. I was working 10, 12 hours a day. Uh, you cannot compete in competitive bodybuilding working hours like that and being stressed out like that. 
dealing with things with my children. I just did not want to raise my children in that environment. I mean, the further, I mean, I wanted to put my family in a better environment. And LA is a great place to live, but to me, it, when you have five children, like I do, uh, you're going to have a lot of problems <laughs> with finances and just putting them into good schools, good education. And then Texas, to me, the, the, the laws were really well. The schools were excellent. The price of homes were excellent. The crime rate was down, and I wanted space. I'd lived in Los Angeles for 14, 15 years, and I just wanted a lot more space. And I found that here, and because of that, that's why I've been able to put on the weight that I've put on this past year. I put on almost, uh, I'm coming in uh, at least 20 pounds. I was 340. It took me two months when I got here, and I gained 40 pounds. I put on, got to 340 instantly. I mean, you sit around here long enough, there's no, there's no noise. <laughs> There is no noise. There's no helicopters. No, there's no cholos walking around with tattoos on their necks. They ain't got to deal with none of that stuff. It's pretty quiet around here because uh, I live out in a rural area. It's not really uh, cluttered yet, and it's a good environment for my children. That's why I decided to move to this area. Plus, for me, mentally, I'm a lot happier than what I've ever been, and my body shows that. First off, my diet was um, okay. It was good, but I changed a lot, and I just had less stress on me. Because of the less stress and all I was doing was mainly training, my training got better, and I got stronger, and I got better. But it was up until about after the Arnold when I got with the, the company that I'm with, with Primal Force and Salvation, when I started working with Chuck. Chuck really changed my diet around because I didn't realize that I was not even remotely close to eating enough, enough food for someone my size. You know, when people say, it's, how do you do it? It's not, it's not what you think. There's a lot of food that goes into making a body like this. There's a lot of food, and there's a lot of hard training. And I, didn't, I wasn't even close. All these years, I thought I was eating enough food. I was not even remotely close to eating enough food. And as soon as I started eating more, I started gaining even more weight. And then I got thicker and a little bit denser. And I also, the past year before, I trained with uh, Albert Beckles for a year. And Albert really taught me movements to help me uh, develop some of the weaker body parts that I had. Um, my back, my upper chest were pretty weak body parts for me. And I could not get them to grow. I was doing 200-pound dumbbell rows, 200-pound uh, incline bench presses, dumbbells. And my upper chest and my, my lats, my back would not grow at all because of the fact that not everyone can train heavy. Training heavy is not always the answer. For most, some of the guys, that's what's, what's the way it works, but you gotta go with what works for your body and works for you, and sometimes training heavy, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get the muscle size that you want and the spots that you want. You may get some joint pain, you may get some other things, but training heavy is not always the answer. And for a guy my size and my height, you gotta really know what you're doing. The, 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 the beat all, beat all of it is technique. And, different types of techniques and different types of movements hit different types of muscles. And after me training for 10 years, I still hadn't learned that. But after you train with a guy like Albert Beckles, <laughs> you're gonna learn that really quick. And I, I applied some of the stuff that Albert taught me and then the less stress over here. And then, then the, on top of that, I started adding more weight to the exercises he taught me and my body grew. And my body grew and I'm very happy with, it took me four years to, to get the size of my lats that way that I wanted. But next year, I, there's only been one year good six months of me eating this way, seven months, and I put on some good solid weight. But if I can go a whole year, I'll see what happens then. I, I'm guaranteed, I know that, now that I know how, I know that I can put on at least another 15 to 20 pounds without my stomach getting any bigger. And that's been my goal since I turned pro, is never to let my abdominal, my abs come out. I do not want my abs stick, I'm too tall. And to have my stomach stuck out, I refuse to let that happen to my physique. Because when this is all over, I still want to look decent. <laughs> Albert, all of last year, I'll trail with Albert Beckles, um, all of last year, no, no, in, in California and North Hollywood, before we moved here, when I did the, when I had a, I had a bad year that year, um, the only thing good about that year, the only thing good about last year, I did the Florida Extreme Show, I did the Night of Champions, I placed horrible. The only thing good about that whole year was training with Albert. But the problem was, because I had never did some of the exercises he had me doing, I had to let my ego go and go a little bit lighter, but that made me a lot smaller. And my supplements were all off. My, my, just my mind wasn't off, wasn't right. If your mind's not right, you can't compete. I had too many things going at once. But once I got here, I moved here right after the Night of Champions, so I've been here almost a year and a half. And before that year, before I got here, I, I trained with Elbert for almost a year, and he taught me a lot of movements. And I can't wait. <laughs> to get back to, um, once I get, get, get settled here even a little bit more, to go to Los Angeles and train for another six or seven weeks with him to learn even more from him. I learned more from Elbert Beckles in the year that I trained with him 
and I did during the whole 10 years of me lifting weights, period. No heavy weight today. One we got from the show, no heavy weight. I'm trying to get some blood and some muscle. I'd rather have my muscles big instead of my ego. The muscles don't know how much you're lifting. <laughs> He's back in the back in a different time period, but I take, I mean, Elvis in a different time period, you have to, I get a lot of information from different people. You have to be able to, like, I trained with Honey Rambot, and a lot of things Honey wanted me to do, I couldn't do, I'm not built to do that. So you have to take the best things from people that you can do and apply it to yourself. There are certain things that Elbert had me do that I don't think will work now, but there's a lot of things that Elbert taught me that do work now. There's a lot of things that, that I learned from Charles Glass that I think will work now. And there's certain things that I also I, I saw him do that I, I would never do because I can't do. They're just You have to figure out and tailor make everything for yourself, for what's going to work on you, what's going to work on your body. And some of the, as far as training with weights, <laughs> uh, as far as the weight training part of it and the um, biomechanics of it, Nobody knows more than Elbert does to me. I mean, that some of the old school movements, these guys didn't have the machines that we had. They didn't have the techniques. They, 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 all they had was technique and movements. And that's why they had the physiques that they have. They didn't have the subs that we have. They didn't have the, um, the knowledge on certain things that we have now. So if you apply that, it, it's, it's a fact. Some of the other guys, they don't believe in applying some of these. They believe in heavy, heavy, heavy. But I, once I learned that and I started to grow, I'm a believer in it now. I mean, there's no substitute for going heavy, but if you're not doing it right, it doesn't matter. It, no, it's just that I trained with the powerlifters, and, and, and I was training with Ronnie, and I was training with everyone else, and that, that was at the time when Ronnie was just on top of the world, and everyone, was, everyone is doing what Ronnie does. Everyone does these heavy, heavy, crazy, heavy workouts. I did that, and I got a, I got a herniated disc in my back. I'm in there doing 200-pound dumbbell, 210, 220-pound dumbbell presses on incline. My upper chest did not grow an inch. <laughs> my shoulders grew. Uh, I was doing dumbbell rows, been over road, dumbbell rows with 220. I had to go buy special dumbbells to do the dumbbell rows. My back didn't grow at all. My joints were hurting, my real delts grew, but my back didn't grow at all. The whole problem was you cannot do, if you're not doing the movement right, it doesn't matter how heavy you get. And you have to let your ego go. But it took me, I had to let my ego go for a whole year, and I suffered for it, but then the gains came from it later. Because once I got the movement down, then I started to be able to go heavier, and then I started growing. And then it wasn't just the movements also, it was the food. It, 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 I had no clue of what I was, that I was eating enough food. And no one, no one in this sport, and especially none of the other competitors, are going to tell you. <laughs> They're not going to tell you nothing. No one's going to tell you anything. The only people that ever taught me anything or showed me things were some of the older guys or some of the women in the sport. The female bodybuilders have been the main people to teach me more than any other male bodybuilders ever did. There's only one male bodybuilder that's ever had anything good to say to me or tried to teach me something, that's Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier is the only one that'll actually tell me, Quincy, you need to do this, you need to do that. No one else told me. I, was, I trained at the old gym, Venice, for seven years with Paul Dillett, Flex Wheeler, uh, many countless great bodybuilders, and no one told, told me a word, not one time. <laughs> the only one that did was Chris, and that's why I look at him in a different light, because of the fact he's the only one that would actually say something to you that can actually help you. You know, other, other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't listen too much. I don't. I've gotten to a point where I don't. I, I, I'm known for being the guy that stays to myself. I don't run around. I don't hang out with most of the other bodybuilders. I tend to be alone, do my own thing, and stay to myself. And and, and that's because I trained at Venice for seven years. I learned to stay to myself and do my thing. Rudolph, Chuck Rudolph. He works for um, Primal Force Salvation. He's the one that does all my diet. He does all my diet, all my vitamins, my proteins, all that stuff for me. And when he taught me, when Chuck got a hold of me is when I started really, really growing. Chuck taught me <laughs> that I wasn't eating enough food. And he knows a lot about the food intake of how this thing works. Calories, calories, food, just not, not just calories, what food goes well with what foods, like what carbs will probably work better. He, he believes in certain things and in, in, in it, we butted heads on certain things, but certain things worked, do work well on my body. The calorie, my calorie intake was horrible. It was only 3,000 calories a, a day. 
And for a guy my size or the size that I wanted to obtain, that was not even remotely close to being enough. I needed over 7,000 calories, at least. Uh, I was eating six, seven times a day, at least, at least 8,000, 7,000, 8,000 calories a day. Lots of rice, lots of brown rice. I like the brown rice during the off season. Before a contest, probably four or five. Five, five, probably 5,000 calories. And before, a couple years ago, I mean, there was no way in the world I was doing that. <laughs> I was lucky if I was eating three. But you have to, when you're, see, a lot of the rules that these people make up don't apply to a guy my size. And that's been some of the problems that I've had in training, that, that some of these movements don't apply to a guy with arms as long as mine, with legs as long as mine, with a body as long as mine. I'm, a one, I'm six four. There are very few bodybuilders that are over six one. And so some of these rules and some of these foods that they come up with and some of these rules that they have, they don't apply to me. A lot of things don't apply to me. Like I'm year for years, I had guys, I eat too much red meat, but then if I didn't eat the red meat, I'd be stringy. And on top of that, I wouldn't gain any weight at all. And you know, there's, there's certain things that you have to feel through yourself that you know your body through time. And I've been doing this for a long time and I've learned my body a lot. I need to be at least, in order to be effective, I think this year I'll come in 305, 305, 306, somewhere around there. But to be effective in this competing, I think I could place very well this year. But in order to be very effective, I got to be like 315, 320. At least that's what I believe. At least 315, 320. I've been a little bit blessed with a little bit decent genetics. And um, my joints aren't that big. My waist isn't that big. So it tends to make me look bigger and heavier than what I am. And, and in the way, with the new judging criteria, with the new judging changes, It'll, it'll help my, my physique a lot. And with, the back, with my back development has grown, it makes my physique even look that much better. And that's why I really believe that's why I placed better this last show, because of the development that I've grown. But I needed to come in a little drier, so I'll drop down to like, uh, I came in 312, 313, so I'll drop 10 more pounds at least from, from the Europa Super Show and drop another 10 pounds at the bulk, come in the bulk nutrition show by about 303, 302. And if I have to drop a little bit more, I will, but, um, I'm hoping to come in at Olympia about 303, 303, 302, somewhere around there. You know, yes. Um, first time. This is my first time going. I don't know what to expect. I did the Arnold twice. Got ninth in the Arnold twos in a row. I'd be very happy if I can at least get top top ten. And I'll be very very happy if I can get top five somewhere. But we'll see what happens. But my goal is now is just to keep requalify again, because I I know this is my first year and I only I really believe that I've only scratched the surface as far as my size goes because I've actually found the key for my body of what works and what helps me grow and so I think another year I need another year in the oven to cook a little bit longer and then I think next year will be a, bit, a, a lot better year for me this year I just would love to just be able to make an impact and I think that I can because of the new judging um, it's going to be a lot better for me a lot of the guys I think are have, the, the guys that don't have the, the, the lines are going to have to come in a lot harder and a little bit smaller, which for me is even that much better because I do have the lines and I'll look even that much bigger standing next to them, I think. So we'll find out um, in October. Well, when you're as tall as I am, the, the disadvantage is it takes you twice as long to fill out. I mean, I turned pro in 2001, I was 275. It's four years later and I finally filled out my frame enough to actually get to go to the Olympia. Um, but there's disadvantages because when you're tall, it's twice as hard to fill out. You get, you get, you get, you're prone to injuries a whole lot more than what a smaller guy is. But, but the, the advantages are when you are taller, if you put on, if you do put on the size, it's five times more impressive. There's been so many times when I've been at shows and I'll stand up from the table and people come to meet me and they're actually in shock that I'm actually as tall as I am. And the first thing out of their mouth is, Man, you're one of the tallest bodybuilders I've ever seen. People are way, people are a lot more impressed or in awe when you're taller, when you're at least over six one, six two. If you're over that, they're really in awe because it's. I'm kind of surprised. Some I, even every now and then I think about it. I'm like, I kind of ask myself, what the hell am I doing here? Because I'm one of the only tall guys in the whole sport, and it's kind of like, I've actually been blessed a lot to actually be here. You know, so. I just know that if, if I keep going the way that I'm going and I keep putting on the size that I need, it may take me a little bit longer to get to the end of the road, but when I do get there, a lot of people ain't going to be real happy with it. <laughs> because once I get there, I'm going to stay there for a while Cause, cause, because I'm too, big, I'm too big to miss.
Yeah, it took me. I mean, I didn't have these legs to begin with. <laughs> it took it took me a lot of years to develop my my legs, and I knew I knew when I was an amateur that as tall as I am, I'm gonna have to have some serious wheels underneath me, and I made it a point to beat my legs past a certain point. See, when I do a squat, it ain't just a squat. I'm doing a squat from way up there all the way down. I, I got guys in the gym here, especially in Texas. Texas is a powerlifting state. You got guys out here that lift some heavy, crazy weight. That's why Ronnie's so damn big. These guys out here do not play around. I've been in California. I've been here. These guys train very heavy. I, I wear knee wraps no matter when. I, if I'm doing squats, hacks, I'm too tall not to, do, not to wear knee wraps. I have to protect my knees. It's a lot of damage going on my muscle. That's why I've been able to maintain so long, and that's why I've been able to grow for so long. But I think that you really, if you're that tall, you really got to pound the squats. You got to pound the heavy basic movements, and you can't play around with it, and you got you to go for it. And it doesn't come overnight. It takes, it, it'll take you a good, maybe five to six years, but I've been doing this since I was 17. When I got into college, and I got, when I went to college at 17 years old, the first thing the coaches made me do was squats. I used to hate them, but I you play that brain game with yourself and you lock it in your mind and you start to believe something and say, oh, I love it, I love it. And after a couple of months, you'll start believing it. <laughs> and that's basically what happened with my legs. And after a couple of years of going by, they just develop time through time. This does not come over, does not come easy. It's not for the weak of heart. I've told people, 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 a lot of people who they think that I just woke up one morning looking this way. But people who have known me for over 10 years and knew me back when I was in high school, they knew but I've been doing this for a long time. This has been over, over 10 years of work in order to develop these body parts. And the only, the, 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 the big drastic change I got was my back this year. That was a big drastic change for me, even for me, because of the movements. And it makes me think that maybe if I would have known some of these movements even back 10 years ago, I probably wouldn't have got that. It, I probably would have achieved my goals even that much quicker. But I didn't know these things that I know now. And But with the legs, you're absolutely right. You have to have them. And most of the tall guys don't. They don't have the hamstrings. I've been blessed with great hamstrings. I ran track. I've been an athlete since I was, since I was a child. I, I, I ran track in college, played ball through high school. I've been total athlete all these years. Um, I guess it came natural for me to fall into this and to fall into some other type of athletics. And I developed a lot of muscles from being in athletics the way that I was. And my legs, I've been, I really pound them. They didn't come easy. They did not come easy, so I really work on them very hard. Legs and calves. Teeper teased me for years, calling me decaf. <laughs> nah, he doesn't say that no more. I got calves now. <laughs> One of the few black guys with calves. I'm always 280 for barrel peel and peel. Two and a half.
Go on. Come on. measure my arms. Anymore. Not big enough. That's it. Come on.
Yep, good, yep.
Now it's like 23. Come on. 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 Come on.
17 days, right? 17 days. So, Mr. Olympia.
after the show, I just eat a little bit. I have filming to do for uh, more of my training DVD, which I'm filming all around the contest. Uh, I have to shoot with Muscle Fitness on Sunday. Muscle Tech Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then I have a TV commercial to shoot for Professional Fitness Institute, one of my sponsors, uh, the following week. And uh, my next project, my home in Utah that I'm building now, I have to close all that deal, uh, pick out all my internal uh, design for that house. So I'm gonna be back and forth to Utah and then I start guest posing. I start November 5th, I have one on the 12th of November and then uh, heading out to uh, speak to a, a high school football team for Power Tech, head home, see my family around Thanksgiving, and uh, see where we go from there. Hopefully as Mr. Olympia. That's of course the goal. I always go to win, you know. And uh, you know, if I can keep improving and keep knocking at the door, hopefully my time will come, you know. And I can uh, carry that title. We'll see. So right now it's just two and a half weeks. That's all I think about is a contest. I'm trying to be my best, dial in at my all-time best, and uh, take it from there. That's all I can do. No midsections like that to 280, huh? How are you, sir? Doing good, man. How are you doing? Pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, number one. Top three, G. Number one, yeah. Number one, man. Uh, isn't that top? Is, isn't that top three? <laughs> well, yeah. But I think number one sounds better. Oh. Take the whole thing. Hey, it's Dr. Shortcast. Hey. How are you, sir? Good to see you. you. Best of luck in the Olympia. Yeah. Hey, you made the TV right here. It looks neat. Go get it, brother. <laughs> Gunther in 05. Thank you. 
Pretty much go a long time already on low carbs, so consider low for my size and everything. You know, especially the last I would say four weeks, you know, tighten it really down. So, but I feel good, so something is working. <laughs> yeah. I think it will be so far my best, so... There will be surprises here. So. I don't think that I really come heavy as unusual. I think probably I will be the same. 295, 300. But, um, you know, how it is sometimes, you know. If the skin is tighter and the muscle is fuller, it looks bigger and different and better, actually than uh, you know before when your nose is tight you can have the same weight but the quality is not there of the muscle you know so and i think this year i uh, by far by from quality and how i died i think it's the best i did uh, last weekend i guess of dance and usually people are pretty much very surprised how i look so well actually a judge he said and i think the same Actually, Charles too. That I even look better than in 2002 already. So we'll see. So we go go take that and bring it to the old. We'll see what's happening. <laughs> so what's Wednesday? Wednesday before that. Hey, did it. Come on, go quick. Go ahead, come on. Yeah, 
see now it's uh, I think it's good I don't like to really I mean when I was training Santa Clarita I had another training partner but you know so we kind of lost contact because I moved down here to Marina and I like to train here and uh, I like just like the beach area so and but this I like to have or keep the same tra training partner for a while because I think it's good if you know each other really well especially you know kind of you team up a little bit you know people know when to help you what to look out for you know especially if they know you and you get ready for shows they can tell compared to last time do you look better or not you know so that's important too yeah Chad Chad Nicholson so far it goes really well <laughs> Yeah, it's good, you know, I mean, I trust him with things he does and uh, I think he trusts me, so. And Charles, you know, of course he knows me already very well, you know, doing him. He knows what to do with the workouts and stuff, so that's a pretty big thing. Yeah. <sighs> 
Later, after the workout. After the workout. Thank you. 
Makes me still don't feel. I knew you were better, Rob. Much better.
<laughs> well, last year I think we last year I had the the H H two um, with airbags on it, the black one. This year uh, I got rid of the H two because everybody uh, and their mother has an H two now, so uh, 
I have to be different like always. So I went out and, and bought the, the G55 AMG Mercedes-Benz, uh, the sports utility. Uh, just something different. And to me, um, I'm not the type of person that goes out and splurge on, on things like that. But I feel I work hard for it and I earn it. But at the same time, having something like this gives me an appreciation to work harder. So that's the reason why I do stuff like that. And, you know, I still want to be able to enjoy it uh, when I'm still young. But I notice for me as a motivation, if I go out and, and buy something like that or drive something like that, then I know I have to work harder to accomplish what I need to do in, in my life and, go, and goals. Same partner. Another year. Second year this year, you won the Masters National again, the 50 and over in the heavyweight class. Uh, didn't win the overall, so didn't get his uh, Master Pro card, but still did really well two years in a row. the back day again landed on the same day but oh, I well. see the difference a lot more tighter <laughs> yeah yeah prepared longer this time knowing that I didn't compete all year long so this has to be a good shot for me no injury this year knock on wood um, after we shot last last time the next day I got injured uh, that's when I toured my my patella so uh, the last three weeks, we couldn't really train legs or do anything. So this year, it's tough. It's a good year. We'll see how we end up this time. Still training with the young guys. Still kicking our ass. <laughs> How old are you? What's that? How old are you, sir? 51.
This time we filmed a, about a week and a half out. I think last time when we did this was probably about three weeks out. And uh, the day afterward is when I uh, is when I tore my patella. So three weeks out, unfortunately, leg training was a was a no no go. Uh, surgery went well back in February. Um, game plan went as well. Um, competing after the Olympia, did the European tour and requalified. So it gave me a whole year to just recover and freshen up. Uh, I felt pretty good going into the show. Last year, if I was to rate myself, I was probably about 65, 70% going into Olympia. So uh, this year, everything went as planned. Um, we diet longer, we train smarter. Um, we just took our time this time and not have to try to rush the show. So we had a whole year to do that. So I feel really good going into this year Olympia. Um, 12th place last year, as long as I'm moving up, I'm doing good. So uh, who knows? I mean, if I place top 10, I'd be happy. If I place top six, I'd be ecstatic. So um, sky's the limit. I mean, all I can do is take my best package and bring it to the table. And whatever the judge sees, I mean, that's all we can, we can pray for. So um, other than that, I, I think it's a great year. Um, we accomplished what we want. So we're a week and a half out. And really, the last week won't count because we'll be in Vegas already. So um, I think it'll, it'll be a successful year. <laughs>
Come on, pull now. Pull. Come on. Come on. Good. Come on. Gotta re rack your weight. Yeah, we still, for, for, for me, uh, they always say if it ain't broken, don't fix it. All, all we can do is improve on it. Uh, I, got, uh, I got Milos as far as, uh, as a friend. I mean, he, we put our input together. Milos, my workout partner, Leonard, and then we have another workout partner that, was, that wasn't here today who was here, but he was injured, uh, Chris Struby. So we, 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 we just make each other, we look at each other, we, we, we put stuff together and we uh, try to pull a strategy that works for us and and uh, it's always nice to have more head than, than one to, to really analyze the whole picture so instead of just doing everything um, one way putting all our head together and try to analyze and see what works best for us so um, I think it works well I mean I um, can't ask for anything better I mean Leonard as a partner has always been a uh, supportive it that he can ever be so um, I think overall I think I have a good team too hard this time. Died it way too long. Yeah, as far as uh, what I noticed about me after all these years, um, if I diet longer, last, normally my normal typical diet is anywhere between eight to about 12 weeks. And uh, this time we didn't want to take a chance, so we went ahead and started dieting about 17, 18 weeks out, really gradually going into it. and. I noticed my body, uh, even with a lot of Asians that I know, um, they, we have thicker skin. So being that we do have thicker skin, we have to diet longer to get it. Rip is one thing, but to get it grainy, it's, it's another level. Um, so I've noticed this year my skin's really tightened up a lot more and it's getting that thin skin grainy look. And that's what we wanted to accomplish this year going into the show. And to do that, we've noticed we have to diet longer. Well, you know, being Asian, I grew up, of course, on rice. I mean, there's no such thing as breakfast. Rice is breakfast. Or rice is whenever we can get them in. So, um, but at the same time, uh, I've been doing this since I was 17 years old as far as competing and dieting. So uh, my 
mom is when I first started dieting, she thought I was crazy, uh, not eating rice. But I mean, eventually she catched on that, you know, I can't do rice in the evening time. So if she, if she would, if I go over there, where she does feed me, it'll be rice during the daytime. So um, as long as you can, uh, you know, balance yourself and you can still have rice, just keep it early in the day. And, you know, at nighttime, you know, you're going to do most storage. So cut it out at night. For me, the, the only difference is during, during the off season, um, I don't go extreme like a lot of bodybuilders. I don't, you know, put on 30, 40, 50 pounds and take them all off. I mean, I fluctuate about 10 pounds maybe. So, you know, 10, 15 pound max. So mainly it's just water weight. Um, my, I eat clean all year long, so I really don't get out of shape too much. Um, I keep my abs all year long. Um, it's just for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a healthy way of doing it versus uh, going from one extreme to the other which is nothing wrong with that. But for me, I, I choose to eat clean all year, uh, all year long. So, I mean, um, sorry, it's low carbs. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it, that works for me and, and, you know, someone else could disagree. So I just think that you just have to fit in your lifestyle what you can do. And I just feel a lot better if I'm not, you know, 30, 40 pounds overweight and breathing heavy. So being had a, a, a real good quiet year, really never quiet, because I mean, be between my son's soccer game and the jiu-jitsu and, and um, you know, the business, the Max Muscle Store and then my website and everything else that I'm doing, I'm busy all the way around anyway, but um, uh, for next year, it'll be a busier year. I'm going to focus on Olympia and then right after Olympia, I have a, get a couple guest appearance and then um, we're really going to focus on the Ironman Arno in San Francisco for next year. So. Um, it won't be that much of a break. I'll probably get a few weeks break and then back into training again right after Olympia. I was in Japan a, a couple weeks back and, um, you know, the traveling that I do, it has to be really worth it for me because I really don't want to miss my kids' uh, soccer game and, and, and their events that they're doing and their schooling and everything else. So um, Japan trip was the last place I visited a couple weeks ago. That was my guest's last appearance. But um, it, it's really, really nice, and it's really shocking how much, how many fans you have around the world. Um, and being being that I am Asian, going into some a place like Japan, an Asian country, the fan base is just incredible. I mean, they said I've got more fan base than anybody else out there as a pro bodybuilder. So that makes me feel real good and motivated coming in to this year Olympia too. So I know if I do better, then then you know. It's just going to be that much better for everybody else and all my Asian representative, I guess. But of course, I have fans uh, all around the world, so it doesn't matter what race you are. Back again, baby. Mr. Olympia time. Different physique. That's right. I ain't messing around this time. Just gonna knock out some shoulders today. Taking somebody out. movement right here, power lift and move, isolates the uh, top of the delt. Nine days left, man, this ain't no joke, Chad trying to suck me dry, but that's cool, you know, still 230 
six pounds of empty stomach in the morning. So, as you'll see as we train, I'm in the best shape of my life. Shoulders up. I do it on the top of the uh, the head. Stop. It's a pausing movement. It's halfway between. It's almost like if you bring your dumbbell down to your ears and push it back up. What it does is it isolates the front and the medial head of the shoulders and push it through as a power movement. So I use that to warm up my shoulders really good, and then I move from there to dumbbell press. Go from there to uh, other stuff. You know, side laterals, rear delts. But this is just the main frame to get that blood in there. You know, just warm them up really good, and then it'll. Actually helps me through during my workout. Once the blood's in there, and then it's easier to work. And a lot of people that have shoulder problems should knock these out first. Yeah. Same weight. Ah. Woo. See what I mean? It looks easy, but it ain't. Lexus. On the figure, newest figure girls. The newest figure girl pros. She's pretty strong. This girl squats 315. Hi there. So she keeps me on my toes. Oh yeah, I, I just try, I try my best, you know, just uh, behind you. Or in, in front of you, which one is it? Behind, on my <laughs> elbows. Yeah, yeah. I'm going for 12. Alright, here we go. Come on, that's all you likes cardio. <laughs> Nobody. If you like cardio, you're crazy. <laughs> that, that's, that's the hardest part. That's, that's the workout. That's the workout. <laughs> you good at cardio, you'll be a good bodybuilder. Because I don't like it. I hate it. Love to train. Like eating. But I don't like doing cardio. And I don't like doing legs. I've learned to accommodate myself. Become accustomed to doing legs. You know, when I squat, my best squat's over 600. But I don't like it. Elbows. My elbows. Uh, Come on. Uh, Please. Gotta finish it off. My wife's becoming a good squatter. <laughs> Safety first. She wrote, baby.
was actually pretty good. Best way to get rid of weight. Drop the leg, drop them off. Right, Pano? Notice how I put my weights back. For all you gym rats, put your weights back. Press the movements, I don't need my wraps. I'm gonna use these when I'm pressing. Keep my elbows warm. Six and six. Now, bent overs. Oh, 40s. Start 40s. It's a good thing I took my vitamins this morning. Because when it gets close like this, Diet it down, low carbohydrates, taking in about 75 grams of carbs for the past seven days. Still got six more days to do it. And uh, you really need to uh, take something extra. So 
I take a 17 HD. Biotech's got some good stuff out there. The hollow methyl dianadrone has a thermogenic effect. I take it before I train, you know, plus have a little coffee. I'm straight. It gets me through. Now, when I get home, <laughs> the battery's done. But at least, you know, bodybuilding is, we want to get through our workouts, get through our cardio sessions. Who cares after that? I lay around. When I get home, that's it. I'm on my back. Something beatbox. I'm trying to get motivated here. I can't do that. Yeah, man, it's all 80 stuff, man. Music sucks.
have smaller waist, better lines, good shoulder to waist ratio. So when they change the mandate, they talking about my physique. So as long as I'm in shape, which I am, I'm gonna be up in that top five fighting for mine. Just put me in the ring. Gunter, Gustavo, Darum, Chris Cormier, Dennis James, we getting we gonna get it on. If throw me in there with Jay, we gonna get it on too. I ain't scared of none of y'all. flat today but the conditions good so I don't care just keep on ride it out 21 reps I always do 21 five, seven from the back seven to eight sometimes I do seven sometimes I do eight seven from the back to get the really detail in the rump over there in the traps because the traps run from the base of your neck all the way to the middle of your back under the lats so you gotta hit it from different angles. Then I'm moving to the side. I do seven reps. Then from the front, the very front, it's almost like doing a, the beginning of an upright row. Just squeeze it up as high as I can go, hold it, and let it down. So I do those just to end the shoulder workout. So now we'll go progress. Knock out some biceps. Red nose pit bull. I got three of them. I got two blues, one red. That one there is Kane. You know, like they had Kane and Abel. It's a very, very good dog, very well trained. But he thinks he's human. If that dog can talk, he'd be having conversations with me. Hey, Kane. What's your name, Come. Come here, man. You know, see he's smiling now when he likes to get rubbed. Huh. He's smiling. I gotta work out, bro. Good job, now. See, what other place will let you bring your dogs to the gym? <laughs> it's the pet lovers gym here. <laughs> Yes, very friendly. I have, a, um, I have a yellow lab. My mom has a yellow lab too. She's really friendly. So are you famous or why are you being filmed? Am I famous? No one films me. I'm when pretty I work famous. Out. They will, you come long enough. Oh
hurt. 21, baby. You got problems with small arms, do these. They will grow. They have no choice. Seven from bottom to halfway point. Seven from the halfway point to the top. And then seven full. You do three, four sets of that. Don't matter what you do after that. The blood gonna be in there so tough, they have to grow. A lot of people, they just build muscle just by trying to just get the pump. But the pump just tells you that the blood's in there. You gotta go past that point. You have to get past that full feeling and go through it. Two, three extra reps after, if you, after you feel that pump, I go two, three extra reps after. Get those little micro tears. That's how you heal, that's how you grow. Like water balloons. Dumbbells. Dumbbell work now. Do these dumbbells a little different. I do doubles. I do two reps on each side. So I go one, two, left hand, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, six, like that. Most of it just do alternate. I do double alternate. Old school, baby. Yeah. Big biceps. Oh. Steps up, baby. It's gonna be a battle. Look for that first first call out. That's my dream. That's my hope. First call out. Get that. I'll fight my way to rest way. It's just get in the ring. It's almost like a boxing match. You can't ever throw a punch if you're never in the ring. So I need those call outs. Put me in the ring, guys. Exercise for me. I've had injuries in the past. 
hard to work around them. Doing those little movements are difficult for me. But I get them done. As long as I can do a little bit, I'm not gonna stop doing the exercise. My mama didn't raise no quitters. For all you fans and friends and family that's out there watching this, never quit. Never let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. I've been told that all my life. You can't do this, you're not gonna do that. But God has a bigger plan for everybody. And everybody has gifts. And those of you here that have gifts of being a bodybuilder and gifts of having muscle, go for it, man. There's always gonna be somebody that's being negative. You know, you gotta have hope. You gotta have faith in what you believe in. You gotta believe. You know, you gotta see it, visualize it. You know, take this video and use it. You guys gonna be the next big thing. It's all said and done. Somebody gotta carry the torch. Every day's a battle. There's always somewhere, somebody somewhere else training. You know, and I don't have anybody to gauge myself on. I have a good support system. I got my wife, I got my mother-in-law, I got my mom, you know. I just got reconciled with my dad after 30 years, being able to get, find contact with him. So, you know, everything's a done deal, you know. I have a good base, the people that are supportive, you know. Got in great influences around me. I got a great um, vitamin company that is pushing me. And, uh, you know, it's really a blessing to be able to be able to compete and train hard and be able to get it done and be able to present it on stage without having the extra stress of, you know, where the next check's coming in, you know. So that's what bodybuilding's all about, man, building muscle. You want to do it stress-free. Ah. One arm always weaker than another. <laughs> this arm's weaker, we got a better peak. This arm stronger, more size. That's all she wrote. Finish. Benito. I'll see you at the Olympia in nine days.
I ain't done yet. Bodybuilder's dream, cardio. This is what burns fat. Diet is the most important thing. Cardio is very important in my regimen. So we gotta make sure you get it done right. About nine days ago, you gotta keep on, gotta keep on pressing, keep on pushing myself until Wednesday. And I'll be in Vegas. This here, the treadmill, elevated at probably like, you know, level five to seven. And uh, the speed at anywhere from 3.0 to 3.3, just to keep that, uh, keep my body burning fat, keeping it in its uh, fat burning state. But do go too fast, gotta be careful. You burn muscle, so I go just fast enough to keep my body burning calories. My final weight training day is probably gonna be Thursday. Light, just light stuff, you know keep that blood in there, in the muscle. So, I'll train all the way up till Thursday. It's gonna all work out. Talk too much since I'm uh, I'm gonna lose my voice in less than ten minutes. Was I was diagnosed with a polyp on my vocal cord, so when uh, all that straining from training is not helping it, so when I get back to Germany, I will have it surgically removed. You know, I'm just scared to do this cut because he said it's just a little cut, but I'm scared that he might cut the bass out of my voice, <laughs> and I walk around singing like Michael. I don't want that to happen. You know, some, some days it's good, the next, you know, and then uh, after talking a while, I might just lose my voice. So, uh, I don't want to talk too much, you know. Then again, I don't have much to say because this is my sixth year. I probably don't say it at all, you know. What, what should I say? You already know everything. But the only thing I can say about this year is this year I did everything on my own, you know. I did my own training, I did my own diet. I did the Charlie Pro Show with no carb depletion, no carb loading, no nothing. Because, you know, I've been sick and tired of hearing that they want to see me in the condition and the, the size 
did I have one week out? And, you know, so I just said, you know, I was in shape seven weeks out, so I said, why, you know, fix it if it ain't broke? So, um, and I just, you know, I don't, I don't believe in comp depleting and, and comp loading. For me, I think it just doesn't work. You know, I mean, I deplete to the, to, to the, to, to the, to the point where I start losing muscle, and then when you carb load, you know, you can't pick it back up. And then when guys see the pictures that I post, you know, a couple of weeks out, then they say, oh, he lost too much size. This year, I didn't post any pictures after seven weeks out because I didn't want to be prejudged. And uh, I walked on stage at the Charlotte show with a little over 270. So. You know, everybody immediately saw the size difference, you know, so it's, I wouldn't say that I put on exercise, it's just that I didn't lose exercise this year. So just like I said, there was no carb depleting, no carb loading, I just did my diet every day, all the way up to, uh, there was no sodium restriction, there was no water restriction, I was drinking all the way up to a Friday night, and just did the show on, uh, on Saturday, so for the Olympia, of course I, um, <clears throat> I picked up a little bit because I want to come in a little drier and, uh, you know, and I think I will just drop like two pounds from Charlotte and then I should be where I, was, where I wanted to be, big, full, brown, and hard, and that's all. Right. That's the heaviest. On stage, yeah. on stage, I was at the Olympia, the heaviest was 255, 256. It's not a gain, see, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a big gain, it's just not, this time I didn't lose that much. You know, I started dieting with, um, I can tell you, kilos, 128 kilos. And in the first three weeks, I went up to 132. And um, then I went back down to 128, where I started, and I was already in shape. You know, so I dropped another three, four kilos, and I was contest ready. So today, but this morning, my weight was uh, 276. And... Um, I think I will drop about six more pounds to next week. And that's not going to be from carb depleting. It's just going to be from a little bit of uh, uh, less carbs. And uh, and that's basically it. I'm not going to do no last minute changes. I'm not going to change anything. <coughs> Excuse my voice. Um, I'm just going to leave it like it is and just close on in there. And hopefully it works. Prediction? No, no predictions for me. I'm not going to say nothing. We'll see what happens. Pretty much did I've looked in the mirror and decided how much how much carbs I eat, you know. I just, you know, I didn't never go, you know, the last couple of years I always went low carbs, low carbs. This year I didn't do no low carbs. I did pretty low carbs compared to off season, but I always give my body enough carbs to train and hold on to the to, to the muscles, you know. So Compared to the other years, I was I was I went as low as 100 grams a day, 150 grams a day. This year, the lowest was 250. You know, started really early. I started 13 weeks out. I was in shape seven weeks out. You know, so if you're in shape, why drop the carbs? What would that do? You know. Uh, I, I cheated every week. I had a cheat day. Boy, let me tell you, a cheat day. And this time I really cheated. All the other years, I, my cheat day was just basically the same diet, just like 200 gram extra carbs, clean. This year my cheat day was anything but clean. I went and had me carrot cakes, ice cream. Ah, oh, that was good. I'll tell you. I'll think about it right now. And I'm not talking about a piece of carrot cake, I'm talking about a whole carrot cake. Started in the morning and finished at night cheating. Double a whopper cheese. But I left the bacon in the mail, but I had me some cheese on there. Well, I gotta, 
water running down my mouth thinking about it. One more week, I'll be cheating again. This year there's no Grand Prix, no. I got a lot of guest appearances. I'm booked all the way up to November 19th, so I'm gonna stay in shape until November 19th, you know. What I would probably do is just, you know, eat, stick with my diet five days and then just pick out for two days. That would be good enough just to hold on to a decent shape for the guest appearances. And November 19th, then I'm just gonna let go. Because then it's time for my body to do, to give him whatever he asks for. My body wants some cheesecake, they can have some cheesecake. You know? Right now, I'm, right now I'm, I'm telling my body what he can't get. Come November 19th, I'm letting my body tell me what he wants. <coughs> compared to Thailand it is here, but I prefer the cold weather. Not cold, it's not cold, it's like 68, 60, 69, 70. Far as cold for me, it's beautiful. You know, you can train without sweating. You don't need no air conditioning. It's okay, and you gotta get used to the winter, yeah. I said, she gotta get used to it. I was born and raised over there, so I know, you know. If I could think back six years, I could just repeat whatever I said six years ago. We can start from the, from the beginning, but I can't remember. Do you remember? How fast time flies. It's my sixth Olympia. I remember 19, 1995, when I looked in the mirror, I said, I said, I tell, I tell, I said to myself, I want to be on the Mr. Olympia stage in the year 2000, just once. And I made it in 2000, it's my first appearance. Now I'm going for number six. Boy, time flies, I tell you. My goal was just to be on the stage with all the guys. Then my goal was to be top 10. And then after that, my, actually top six was my goal. And now, my goal is to be better than I was in 2003 when I got fourth. So that can only be top three. I know it's a hell of a goal, but it's my goal. You know, you gotta set yourself a high goal. You know, to go through this bullshit all the time. Diet, training, every day. Being home, being away from home. Phone bills, calling your wife and daughter every day. Woo! People just don't know. That's where the money goes. Damn phone bills. I'm not calling her, she's calling me.
slow today. But I can't help it. Call me slow all you want. Try not to lose no size this time. That was the first post I ever saw my idol doing. I came to the wrong. I miss him, to tell you the truth. I'm glad he's not competing, but still, I miss him. Because that, that was his shit. That was his pose right there. Nobody ever beat him in this pose. Nobody. Battle for the Olympia, 2005, six years in a row. Don't know what to tell you all. 
like I said before, all I had to say, I said over the last six years. So this year, won't be much talking. I'm just gonna do my thing. We'll do the best I can. And we'll see what happens next Saturday. That's all. I can't predict, because predicting for me is bad luck. All I can do is try to hold on to as much size as possible. Try to come in as hard as possible. And uh, that's basically all I can do. The rest is up to the judges. And uh, I think so far there's 25 competitors. And I have, I have a tremendous respect, you know, for each and every one of the guys. I know exactly what they go through. You know, I know what they have to do to get there. Everybody's the champ. Everybody qualified for the Olympia. So, uh, you can't really say who's going to play second, third, fourth, or fifth. You know, it's all up to who comes to shape of that day. Some guys, they never, you know, they miss their peak. The last four or five years, they maybe they come next Saturday nailing it, you know. Especially that's what I'm trying to do. So, hopefully nobody else can. <laughs> but if, then, uh, I mean, it would be good if everybody would come in 100%. Then we really know where we stand. If the judges can see that too, so um, let's just wait and see what happens next Saturday. And um, I'm looking forward to being back on this tape next year, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after. Hopefully, I'm not sure though. So far, I'll see you all in Vegas. I'm not very vocal today. You probably can hear it on my voice that. Uh, I have problems with my vocal cord. The doctor told me not to talk too much, so I need to shut the hell up. And, um, but I'm continuing training. I got a couple, I got five more days of training. And, um, hopefully it works. Everything works uh, the way I planned it. And then uh, we'll see you on stage come Saturday, October 15th. Peace, y'all.
сок, сок. Где сок? Где наш сок? Перенос. Еще раз. Спасибо, Стасик, друзья, почаще. Ну, ну, Поселись, дня... может, заместить Лешневского. Ну, два, два дня я не видел, а сколько два дня. Так, много чуть-чуть. Или чуть-чуть поменьше. Yeah. 
13. 13. 14. 15. Пошел. 16. 17. Блин. Там уж вообще ничего с ним.
буквально здесь сделали. А, задний запрет видел? Ты же голове еще вечно похож.
футбольник Я думаю, дальше приветствовать, когда будет. Это произвол вообще лучше даже больше. Будет приветствовать, Саня, если у тебя будет супер то Они будут здесь из произвола. Смотря на то, что ты
What? The next left turn. Take the next right turn. I worked with these guys, Chad and Chris, Chris, uh, Cedo before and I just kind of like like I said I've done so many competitions that <clears throat> I just feel like if it's, if it's not if I'm not working like really really close with someone like if I'm not seeing them all the time each week or something like that it's not really worth it for me to, to you know to try to have someone help me if I can't really see them like I need to see them as far as it's not like a like a babysitting thing, but I want someone to be able to see what's happening with my body because my body's really sensitive and it really and it changes like that. And I've known that from over the years, so I think uh, <clears throat> at this point I would know my body more than anyone out there. So um, you know, you kind of get that after I've been on stage for about 21 years now, competing, and I've been actually competing 19 of those 21 years on stage. Not taking a two years off, three years off, whatever. I've competed every single year, six months in a year. Every six months those years, so. Kinda got the hang of this shit. <laughs> I'll keep my water high still. Until Friday, you know, lower drastically. And then, uh, hopefully when I see you on Saturday, it's gonna be the final, um, 
product of uh, <clears throat> you know what I've been doing. So. Uh, this is buffalo here. Uh, I'm gonna have about four or five more steaks throughout the day, and um, steaks and vegetables. And then I'm gonna go that for the next three days. Same. Saturday morning early, I'm gonna wake up at five o'clock and start loading uh, carbohydrates and simple sugars and stuff like that. It worked for me back in. Um, back in some years when we didn't have, when we start to set our new criteria with the drug testing and all that stuff. And uh, to me, it, it helps you alleviate some water, still stay full with the steak, and then uh, and helps you get more like a, a drunk type uh, fit with your body. But I feel like I still need to drop a little bit more water in my lower back area, uh, upper hip and upper thigh area a little bit. So that's my plan. I think, uh, I think this would be my best bet uh, from now. Um, being that um, I'm still trying to come down and wait. I need to lose by another five pounds, but I'm trying to do it in a manner to where I won't be uh, a flattish and I won't I shouldn't flatten out this way because that's uh, uh, some reason it, it really it's like two like I said there's two different ways that I can do it uh, peak for a competition and this is one I think is going to be my best bet for this year. I'm gonna have some ice cream Saturday morning, <clears throat> cheeseburger stuff like that. Is that brand new, Ben? Yeah, brand new. From Chic. I like it because it's, uh, I mean, the support is just unreal. And I've been, like I said, I've been a, around this sport a long time. And it's been, uh, all the Chic equipment's been, like, just great. Great for me. So, I've had their support for the last three years or so, two years. So I've been well protected in the gym. You, you mean the support? Support. <laughs> one, way, one way and the other. My name is Chris Cormier. Some people call me Cormier, some people call me other things. But all the same. You know, I've been competing in Olympia since 94. Um, here it is 2005, and i um, qualified each year that I've been, uh, been a pro. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 this year is supposed to be, you know, a new type of criteria, which I never really understood why there was ever not, why, why did it ever change in the first place? Because back when uh, my um, Flex and Kevin and uh, Sean Ray, the you know the pretty much set the the standard. Uh, I came in around '94, so I'm sort of from the old school, but I'm still hanging with the new school uh, guys. And uh, it's uh, you know myself and Ronnie, I guess is. Uh, Two of the ones that's been that's been a mainstay since uh, since the early '90s uh, in the sport. So uh, it's 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 uh, it's, it's, a, it's I tell you what it's, it's still it's getting harder and harder each year to better yourself, to better your physique, and to uh, give the, the judges what they want. The, the, the fans want to see you compete. I mean, I think I've competed more than almost anyone in my sport. I've been, <clears throat> I have the record for being in the most pose, professional pose downs, which is 53. 
Um, and uh, I think that's just a testament of uh, what type of physique I have. <coughs> um, I, you know, tried to put on some extra mass for this time. Um, so I got up to like 297. For the first time in my career, and uh, I think this time, time around, I'm gonna be uh, definitely a lot heavier than I have in the past. And I feel like, uh, you know, uh, you know, it remains to be seen what what uh, what's gonna unfold here in the next couple of days. Um, you know, I think I think some I think everyone's pretty eager to see how how things are going to shape up and how uh, how things are going to uh, unfold. So you know, let's you know we'll we'll see what happens. Um, I'm still at a high body weight of like I lost about 30 pounds so far, so I'm about uh, just to say it over 67 right now. But uh, hopefully uh, I'll be down in the lower 60s when I compete or the upper 50s or something like that um, once you drop the water out and stuff like that I'm now making a change to taking out sodium and uh, hopefully uh, when I wake up Saturday morning it's going to be uh, something nice to look up look at up there and uh, you know that's that's been my part of my uh, I've always had that in the back of my mind that you know how I started this sport um, back when I was 15, 16 years old, I always had in my mind I wanted my calves to be around the same, my biceps, my neck, and my, uh, you know, all those measurements should be around the same circumference. And <clears throat> keeping my, my waist as small as I could uh, throughout the years, I think I only put on like a inch and a half on my waist since I started when I was 15 years old. So I think. Uh, you know, with that being said, it's been a long journey of 26 years of training, but I think I've learned and I'm still learning more things uh, about how it's done. It's not actually a, a big secret of anything, but just a you know, trial and error type of thing, um, you know, has gotten me to where I am. I've, uh, I've probably been over, been in the top three for much more around 50% of the competitions I've been in. I've been in over 70 shows as a pro. If you don't believe me, count the records, check it out. But uh, I got 11 wins under my belt, should have been more. A lot of people say should have been more. I think so too. I should have been an Arnold champion a couple times. I feel I've been, uh, I won it a couple times by now. And uh, just didn't pan out that way. But, you know, I just uh, never been one to quit on something. So I've, I've competed in, Olymp in the Arnold Classic 11, 11 times, the Olympia eight times. And uh, the two times I didn't do the Olympia, I had complications. I mean, I'm human, you know, people get sick, people don't look, that you, you don't can't always carry your best, you know, year round, I compete six, Every six months, I've been doing three to four to five shows a year for the last eight years. And, um, you know, sometimes I think that hinders my, my preparation. Uh, later on, when I want to do the Olympias, it's been like, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I feel burnt out. Sometimes I feel like I need to rest, but I had to compete uh, from contract, con you know, different contracts uh, bound me into doing the show. So. I've always tried to honor those contracts, and um, but that's how it, that's how it goes. But you know, I've always competed in Europe. I competed in all over Europe, Canada, uh, uh, wherever, Spain. I've been Holland a few times. It's been it's been a hell of a journey, and uh, we take you guys to the gym, get the last couple of days of working out, and see what we happen. See what happens on Saturday.
Pose now.
nur schweres Training bringt harte Muskeln. Okay. Ist noch schwach. Äh, very hard. Push. Chest is uh, finished and get um, blood, blood train.
is my this is my best pose. This is my first time in Mr. Olympia.
Frank Hildebrand. Ja. Ich, ich habe das erste Mal gesehen in Chemnitz 92. Ich habe meinen ersten Wettkampf mitgemacht. Ja. Da hat sie Gäste auf Ja. Wie heißt du? Ronny Rockel. Ronny heißt du nicht. Ich bin schon zehn Jahre dran, egal wie die aussehen. Das, das ist gut. Wie Gehen wir mal rüber ans Kabel.
This is the last exercise. Then finish. Thank you. For Mr. Olympia. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That's our Turn 
Turn, please. Face front. Be hey, gentlemen, you can step out. 
side chest. Side tricep. Yeah. 
Okay, gentlemen, you can step back, please. Front door bicep. Side tricep.
George Farah, everybody know me by Bulletproof. And uh, the reason why, because I get shot, I was in the coma. And uh, no such a thing as Bulletproof. But this guy, he's always been on my side. And I thank the Lord every day. And uh, not only for being at the Olympics, just being alive makes me feel different. So imagine being in the top 12 in the whole world. I'm, the tep I'm, I'm number 12 in the world bodybuilder how can I complain after being dead a few years back so no complaint here Mut. but I'm gonna better myself that's what bodybuilding is all about 
you know, I went wrong a few years, a few years ago. I start thinking about, you know, the size game, being big and stuff. It didn't work for me. I can't beat these guys. For 260, 270, where am I going? You know, I competed at the Olympia. I'm probably, I want to say, 29, 211. Not, not that big, you know. And, and this past show, I was 218 and 220 at the United Champion. They didn't even look at me. I was eight at best. So that's why I went to the Charlotte. That was only 207. Here I'm only like two, three pound heavier. And uh, I think it seems like the judges are looking at me more often now. And they like the conditioning aspect because it really makes me look like a different person. I mean, you can see almost every, every little detail in my body, every little, you know, striations in my triceps. The skin is just so thin everywhere. So, and it's paying off. It's paying off, you can tell. Look at the skin. See the skin, how thin it is. This is after being on the on the bench all night last night eating burger, you know, especially to the Lord. I want everybody to know that because without him, I won't be here. Next year, nothing less. I'm telling you right now, next year, I will be in the top 10. It's okay, I'm glad this happened because it didn't take now. But for all the people that doubted me, and they said I'm not gonna be nowhere near the top 15, well guess what? There's only two spots from top 10. And I really felt that I get beat by names, so it's all right. I'll pay my dues. It's my second time at the Olympia. Next year will be a different story. Just gonna come back. Five pound heavier, nothing crazy. Five pound. The same condition, if not better. And I'm not gonna be denied. I'm not gonna be denied, Mitt. Tight enough, huh? It's not tight. After you do push downs with high reps, you kill them. You do 16 and 18s, you put a lot of blood in your arms. So now you can't do heavy here. And it's not necessary as long as you fail around between 8 and 12. You're building the triceps. You're building some nice guns. Yeah, people keep accusing me of putting stuff in them, and I love it. I love it. I don't have a mark on my body, and people will accuse me of that, telling me that my arms are big. And that's why people keep saying stuff. I love this. Yeah. You don't need heavy weight. You don't need heavy weight. What I tell people, you can't have guys with big arms and putting oil in them or whatever they're putting in them and have forearms like these because your forearms have to match your arm in order to know that it's real. Well, you know, it's, it's a big difference since the 2002 Mitch because I was just a little, a little bit over the 90s mark. I was only like 190 some. And now I'm, you know, being 20 pounds heavier. I mean, it looks different. It looks, you know, bigger, thicker everywhere. And you gotta remember that 2002, so, uh, you know, people should know, you can't gain more than four to five pounds maximum a year. And this is, it doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are, what you eat or whatever. You know, you gain anything more than that. First, it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna be permanent and, uh, and it's almost impossible. So yeah, I was 197, 
I want to say, so add five pounds a year, so that's 15 pounds. So that's what I am, around 207, 210, you know what I mean? And that's, that's why you see the difference in my arms and shoulders and legs. Take your time. The most important thing, don't do what I did. I tried to rush and be a big guy. It didn't pay off because most of the weight I used to go on the stage was nothing but water. You know, your muscle 70% water, so I was only having bigger balloons, but no definitions. And the judges don't want to see that. They want to see striations. Might not be the biggest guy out there. I guarantee you, I was one of the hardest guys on the stage. And this is a compliment from many people. They compliment me on my shape and definition. And I love it. They love the lines in my body. They love everything. And I'm very happy, very happy. This year was a very productive year. Even, you know, I only really decided eight weeks ago that I'm going to do the Charlotte. Uh, I did the Charlotte after six weeks of dieting hardcore. And this is my eighth week and land me in the 12th place. You know, beating Marcus Rule. Uh, Chris Cormier was off. I couldn't believe I beat Chris Cormier and he's, he's one of my idols. So, but just being, you know, compared to the best in the world, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, remember in 2002, I was 19. So now to be 12, I'm making the improvement I talked about. So there's people that talk and people that walk. And like I said, next year, I know it might be tougher. Dexter will be bad. Chris is going to be on, everybody. But I still, I'm going to tell you right now, I will make the top 10. And I will be back to the Olympia. And not like some people said, and one of them was Sean Ray, that I will never be at the Olympia again after the 2002. That's why he apologized. Because you know he made a mistake when he looked at me last night. That's right, baby. Bulletproof is coming back. Okay, nine sets of triceps, that's enough. Move some biceps now. I'll get the blood going, same thing as the triceps. People like heavy weight. I say, God bless you, do heavy weight, but I do heavy weight on everything, 500 and some squat, do 1400 press. When it comes to arms, the little, you gotta squeeze. You gotta do them nice and slow, and that's how they grow. Believe me when I tell you, in no time, people be accusing you. They be telling you what they're telling me, what are you putting your arm? <laughs> and I laugh, I laugh in their face. I tell them, I tell you what I put, power, dedication, every day get up and eat good, that's right, I use the same principle that Joe Weather taught us before, it's pre-exhaust the muscle, pre-exhaust the muscle to high reps and move on to something with grow reps. A lot of the, the amateur, I want to tell you one thing, don't make that mistake, overtrain your arm. Your arm is the smallest, the smallest muscles in your body basically. They overtrain quick, you know. Don't do it more than once a week. Hit them, hit them hard, hit them slow like I'm doing. Don't go crazy heavy. Keep the form on your arm. Don't lose the form. You lose the form, your arm will never grow. And believe me, I learned from my own mistakes. I used to do jumping, doing heavy weight. Didn't work for me. As soon as I slow it down, squeezing, everything starts changing. You don't need heavy weight. Arms don't need heavy weight. They grow.
You don't know how good it feels. And my fellow competitor, they're placing ahead of me. And they're complimenting me about my guns. They said, me and George, beautiful arms, man. All the details, every little vein you can see on the side, on the inner, all the cross striated, the triceps, biceps. That's a pure muscle, baby. Don't mistake it. Nothing's gonna make you look like this. No oil, no nothing's gonna be the hard, hard rock. I just do two wide, and I go, and I do two very on the end. Pure elbow to the outside. Pure muscle, nice and slow. That's right, baby. You don't need heavy weight Not for guns like these. Every time you train, guys, believe me when I tell you, when you train arms, you want them to get big. Take that secret from me. Leave your ego at home. Nobody care how much you lift when you're on the stage. They don't care. They just want to see your sport and stuff like that. But this, that's what they want to see the judges. I never, I've been competing for, I want to say 15 years. Since I was 14 years. I never, ever was on the stage. And the judges came and asked me, man, how much you do for your arms? How much you do? So they don't care. You're a bodybuilder, not a power lifter. Train smart. Train wise. Another secret I'm gonna tell you about my biceps workout. You guys are gonna laugh. I only do six sets. That's right, six total sets a week. And they grow. You do more than that, they shrink. Make sure your shoulders are out of it completely. You see what I'm doing? Laying my arms all the way down. Let the biceps do the work. On this one, you don't want to do a high rep. Yep. Believe me, they're burning. You don't need heavy weight. Over 21 inches. I'm standing next to the biggest guys in the world. Pound for pound, believe me, man. They're not touching me. Look at the guys behind me, Marcus Rule. Close to 300. He didn't beat me. It's all about conditioning, baby. Smart training. Smart training. Judges are not fools. They see the pure muscle. Yeah, some people do put oil or whatever. Can you put oil in your forearms? I doubt it. 18, over 18 inch forearms. Can't put oil there. <laughs> <coughs> Next year we're making 22. That'd be about five pound only, five pound heavier. You think five pound is not a lot? Go to the supermarket, buy five pounds of pure steak. Put it in front of you on the counter, see how big that is. Or put it on your shoulders and arms, see how big they get.
try this weight at home and do it the same form I did and you'll know what George is talking about. Pure beef muscle. That's what you call arms. That's why people are accusing me. Just putting some in them. See that? That's pure muscle, baby. In your face. Battle of the Olympia. That's why I'm here. Love you guys. Peace. See why I'm one of the best in the world. David Henry, I'm 30 years old, uh, February 2475. Uh, currently I'm active duty military and also uh, IFB Pro. Uh, managing both of them at the same time, uh, which is not easy. So. I am a weapons expediter. Basically I tell people uh, where and what munitions to load on what aircraft. I no longer do the hands-on, I just basically point and click, hey you guys need to go do this and that. I ride around in the truck. <laughs> it's kind of lazy. <laughs> At this current level, uh, I've been attempting this for six years, uh, consistently. Inconsistently, probably about eight. Eight total. I got a late start. I got a late start. I laid off. Uh, I did my first show at uh, 16 years old. Uh, took third at the Latin Classic. I didn't touch a weight at that time. Um, then I laid off for four years. And I didn't get back into it until, until I turned uh, what, 24. So I didn't, I didn't start back until I turned 24. Uh, from there, it took me three years uh, at the national level or uh, at the uh, amateur level to uh, get to the nationals and then national level, turn pro at 27 uh, in the uh, 2002 nationals in Dallas. Uh, from there on, it's been a whirlwind. It's been great.
Off season? Uh, I don't. I don't go any higher than 405 on, on anything. <laughs> of course, incline's my hip, my uh, strongest movement now. Uh, so I do it a lot. What? I just show, man. I do this. It's easy. Right after it. Oh wait, I got these. Yeah. Better. <laughs> can, can you squeeze your pecs a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel blessed, man. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Congratulations. Yeah. You're beautiful. Good. Thanks, man. Thanks. That's what a couple cheeseburgers does. <laughs> Actually, I had like 40, 40 hot wings last night, four or five beers, <laughs> french fries. You went to the party? Yeah, I went to the after party, and then, but I just had a, uh, I just went to Hard Rock to eat too. So. We went to bed about four this morning, and I got up at seven. <laughs> I didn't really eat breakfast. It was just uh, you know, a uh, a blue cheese hamburger <laughs> with horseradish and a whole bunch of French fries. <laughs> so I don't know if that counts. So. My regular tempo is normally about a minute and a half, two minutes rest in between sets, uh, and the training is a uh, it's a little hard harder uh, approach than I was doing than I was showing. Uh, I use a lot heavier weight, but because um, I am I am still dieted down, I haven't put all my water back, haven't put all my fat back on uh, my body, so the weights the weights uh, on film they're probably uh, they're pretty light uh, as compared to what I normally use. <laughs> I'm very 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 strong, uh, and I've been fortunate not to be uh, injured through any of that. Uh, so yeah, the, the the pace was a little faster. It's 45 seconds or so you guys were seeing. Um, but I do normally wait about a minute and a half, two minutes, which I feel fully rested uh, so I can put the maximum effort into my sets. So because of the quicker pace uh, for film and stuff, the weights have been lightened up. <laughs> Not considerably, but they have been lightened up. Uh, some people may say that's a, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of heavy weight, but to me it wasn't. Uh, I was just going through the motions. It was really good. It felt good. Got a real quick pump. Right, my body responds better to the lower reps. I do not like using higher reps. If I do a low rep scheme, it'll usually be a rest pause. It'll be eight in the beginning. I'll rest for about a minute, and then I'll throw out another four, a rest again, and it'll be like another two or three. So then that way my total rep range is between 12 and 15. So with the same weight, static weight. I don't, I don't increase weight. Uh, I don't ascend ascending sets. I don't do descending sets. I don't do strip sets. I do straight sets normally. I'll, load the, I'll get a couple warm-up sets of whatever body part I'm working. I'll throw on the maximum amount of weight I'm gonna use for eight reps, and I go for it from right there, and I keep the weight the same. 100, 105. 105. Flies. 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 Yeah, uh, if, if the weight definitely feels light, I will throw on more weight, uh, especially if that, if that first rep flies up like butter. I'm, I'm throwing on more weight. Uh, that's just me. That's the way I feel. Uh, that's how my body responds to the seriously, seriously heavy weight. Uh, and I get pumped up so fast that it doesn't take but maybe one or two sets anyway to blow me up. So.
I was for my age. Uh, probably at this point, I'm probably 100% over what I started with. Easily. Easily. On that incline hammer strength right there, I believe I started with probably two 45s and a quarter. Now I can do six. <laughs> Relatively easy. You know, when I, when I started. So, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, because that's all the machine to hold. <laughs> Contest weight, so 115. No cardio. I don't. Be, I don't believe in it for myself. My, my metabolism is so fast, and I know my body works uh, as well as it has. It's so efficient at uh, metabolizing food for energy like that that I don't need to touch any treadmills, no type of cardio equipment. And I don't even walk around the block. But I'm still cardiovascularly fit, which is weird. I'm not trying to explain it, but uh, it, it, that's just the way I, my body works. Uh, my diet, a simple diet change, the the gym intensity is the same. And, and body fat just starts just dropping like crazy. Um, I'm one of those that if I miss a meal or miss my water, my body weight fluctuates two to three pounds a day easily. So it's a constant battle with myself to keep going up and up in weight like I have. But I managed to do it. Uh, now it's just part of my lifestyle. I'm a, I'm a typical hard gainer, yes. Uh, I turned pro at 167 in 2002. I hit that stage uh, last night at 202 to 203 contest shape and in even better condition than I ever ever showed before uh, and you know I, I believe that in the next year year and a half or so I can actually step on stage at about 210 215 contest shape same conditioning same 28 and a half inch waist and uh, will still do as well as I have been doing off season uh, my calories usually range between six and seven thousand a day from Monday through Friday 
uh, afternoon. Friday afternoon to uh, Sunday evening, they go up to 10 to 12,000. Basically, I, I eat any and everything from the Friday afternoon to the Sunday evening. And I mean anything. If I'm out and there's fast food around or something like that, I, I will shovel down as much as, as I possibly can. That's some of the little metabolic confusion that I've done to my body over the off season that has allowed me to gain so much weight and, and such quality muscle. Um, contest time, uh, I'm between four and 5,000. And that's consistently through the week. I don't, I don't do the uh, weekend, weekend binging, nothing like that. Uh, I try and slowly drop the weight, maybe a half a pound or so a week or every other week uh, will come down. I don't get so far out of shape in the off season that I need to drop weight so dramatically. I probably go about 15, 20 pounds over my, my uh, competition weight. And uh, that way I don't have to diet out so much. Seven weeks is max, is good. And that's all I need. I'm working at a moderately fast pace. <laughs> so, I'll be at the old stage again, trust me. Oh, hell yeah, I'm doing Iron Man. I'm gonna kill him, dude, early in the season. Early in the season, it's on. <laughs> huh? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy Christmas. I'll, I'll diet right after Christmas again, like last time. I started my diet December 26th last year for all seven shows. Seven. Seven? Six was the uh, wild card. Seven. Seven was the Mr. O. Beat that. <laughs> and come in consistent, you know? I don't know how I do it. Alright, Mitch. Last set. You know what? We're going all out on film. <laughs> 285. <laughs> I ain't scared. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Uh, the feeling it cannot be described. Uh, I've, I've done it. I've, I've, I've done what my, my goals. Now it's time to set some new ones. So uh, it's the first time. It definitely won't be the last. <laughs> definitely. What's next? Uh, early season next year or early season? You know um, shows. Uh, I'm preparing to come in uh, now that I know I, I can. I'm capable of, of doing a lot more damage than. Uh, has been proven. Uh, I, can, I believe I can top three uh, some shows early on, qualify for the O, and just uh, maybe hit a few shows here and there just to, uh, I don't know, just for some monetary benefit. 
you know, there's nothing wrong with that. If I can, if I'm capable of doing it, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, and then after that, concentrate on the O. Supportive, very supportive. Uh, the, the best, the best people out there. Uh, they know who they are. Consistently coming up to me all the time and let me know, uh, you know, what they like, what they don't like, what they like to see, and what uh, they don't like. Uh, I take all those comments and compliments and uh, use them to my benefit. You know, you use what you can, discard the rest, and uh, it's definitely helped. It definitely fired me up. pictures on the wall up there. See the old days, Steve Reeves, John Grimmick, Aura, Charles Atlas. You see the pictures, Mix? Look. Huh? Well, film them for God's sake. How many? How many reps you want? You dial in for reps? How many you want to do? <laughs> 20, reps. 20 reps. Look, it's made by Flex. It has Flex. That's five dollars extra. <laughs> you gotta get one of those fancy belts with my name on it, man. You know? Look at this thing. Is this right? No, it's not right. I never like my skin to touch any machines in the gym. You never know what people has, you know? Especially when you got a training partner like this guy. <laughs> This guy can have anything good. Trust me. It's very, very brave for him to say that when I'm holding 400 pounds above his head. I'm gonna do it anyways. To shave my inner. Well, <laughs> I've, uh, after all these years, I've worked out that it's best for me to shave with a machine. Yeah, I don't shave with a, a blade anymore. Um, it's a little bit of a work getting in the crevice, you know, you gotta like really lift your arm and get in there and you know, but uh, hey, you know, if Ronnie can shave, anybody can shave. Bye bye. Hey, how you doing? How are you? What's going on, see man? You. I haven't seen you Hi, in a long time. How you nice. doing? Hi. Yeah. I'll see you. Bye bye. Okay, you on. <laughs> Say something like, uh, what do you want to say? Welcome to, welcome to, yeah, we, you, you can say welcome to the, uh, uh like, what, what do you say, uh, the newly expanded. You want me to say welcome to the, you want me to say, welcome, it? You, you could say it, okay. welcome to yeah, the you can say it. newly expanded. Tonight, we have dumbbells up to 250, we have. It's cut, man. Okay. Fighter Phil Baroni, 
world kickboxing champion Derek Panza. Uh, I'm forgetting, brother. <laughs> You'd be able to cut this and straighten yeah, this yeah, out, right? Will, yeah, sure. Thank you so much. All right. But you got to make us a nice copy of that, okay? Oh, sure. No, only uh, one I talked to was Branch. I mean, she, I rarely see Ronnie. I think, you know, <laughs> anybody, you know, really don't see Ronnie that much at all. He's always gone, as far as I know. Um, so he's cool and everything like that. But, no, it's not like we go out or hang out ever or anything like that. Quincy, the same thing. You know, I don't hardly ever see him and stuff like that. And, you know, whatever, I just see Branch on a daily basis. And, you know, yeah, you know, that's, that's cool. That's all I need. You know what I mean? So, okay, just too bad for them. Yeah. <laughs> Not nowadays, uh, gas price going on. Well, I got a Bentley, so what do you expect? <laughs> if, I, if, if you can afford a Bentley, <laughs> gas is not that high for you. <laughs> Do you know how tall Ralph Moore is? Ralph Moore is tall. He's as tall as me. He's taller yeah. than you? He's being about the same height. He might be a little bit taller than me, but we're about the same height. Wow. He loves me. Him, him, Lou. I get along with Lou. Oh, I get along. Lou? Lou's taller than me. You're taller than me? Yeah, Lou's taller than me. Wow. I'm 6'4". Lou's got to be 6'5". He's, he's taller than I am. Welcome back. 2005 Ballad Olympia. I actually buy and sell antique cars now. 1969 Corvette Stingray convertible. It's crazy because I was, I was one year old when this car was made. Antique. An antique car is anything over 30 years old. Anything under, under 30 is classified as a classic. So this is a classic right now. Next year is gonna be an antique. This is a 76 Stingray, T-top. Well, you see my Viper in here. This is the real deal, as Chris Cormera say. This is a, a 1969 Mustang Mark I. The gear shifter you're looking at there is called a Hurst shifter. Anybody who's a Mopar guy who's into cars know what that is. You guys can hear that sound, that means that means power right there. Original spoilers in the on the bottom. All right, you got the the ram here at the top. You know, really happy I picked this up. You know, I always wanted to have one of these as well. But um, got a few more cars coming in. I'm gonna do some work on them. And a car like like this particular Mark One in this condition, you could uh, you could get anywhere between 40 to 50 for it. Brand new, this car back in '69 was about 3,500 dollars, and that was. $45,000, $45, so that's it, yo, that's, you know, uh, so that's six, I need one more, <laughs> one for every day of the week. FedEx at my door from uh, Woodland Hills, you know what that means, that's uh, Weeder's head office. Bam! This is it, the, the new cover, my new cover, my first flex cover, I'm really excited about it uh, I did this shoot uh, this year right after the Arnold with Chris Lund up in, in Cali and uh, I was wondering when they're going to use some of these photos um, and uh, you know finally I got my cover hey those boys they thought they were living large they ain't living large Pick it up.
Casa. Let's check out the fun and shit. That's the low low inside there. When I want to get gangster, that's what I pull out. <laughs> Dude, she's saying what's up. Say what's up. Say something. Speak. 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 She speak. 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 Say something. Speak. 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 Zeus. Zeus. Come on, come on, speak, buddy. Speak. 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 Fifty pounds my first year of training, but uh, so of course, so once I started weight training, around, uh, so I'm therapy and making muscular gains at the same time. Is it at night? You see, like the when the Mandalay Bay was and all that stuff. It's pretty tight. Yeah, see, bear, bear's a monster, man. That's not food. That's mature. That's not sushi. <laughs> Where is it? He sleeps right there like a king. This is his bed. That's how we chill. <laughs> and here, you know, got the two shower heads. This one, keep my head like over it. It means like sits on my head about uh, another five or six inches. I'm about sitting about like that high. I got the jets in here showing, blowing on my back from a hard workout. Pan it over, got my MTV blowing, showing some pump. I had uh, an idea when I had the house built. I wanted a cable run out here because I knew I wanted a TV right there. Screw on the baby. Hey, you see how the kids got their little, they had no executive desk like this. Oh, look. <laughs> Man got gunned down back when I was, uh, this one of my homeboys from back home got shot like eight times. Hey, did you guys see the uh, fine dining down there? You guys get out, get ready. Get ready. <laughs> this is how we roll, you know? I like 12 people chilling. <laughs> down, 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 down. It's okay. Down. Good boy. Show you manners, huh? You got good manners. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you're your side now. It's like every time I started to diet, that's what I'm going to do. You're the key to the universe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I get down in here. That's how we do. Doing these battles since 95, I think, was my first one. Was that your first one? 96. No, well, 95, dude. No, 96. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Was that your first one? Yeah. When did, what year did I have Melvin on there with me? That was 95 Olympia. It was 96? I wasn't living, I don't know, because I was living in Orange. I was living, I was training at the Fountain no, Valley. No, not, not Chicago. Yeah, wow. Chicago one. Okay, 96. <laughs> 95, 96. It's all the same. My name is Chris Cormier. Some people call me Cormier. Some people call me other things. But all the same. Hey, in my office. Oh, that's okay yesterday. No water, too. That shit here. I left that here yesterday on this stuff. Nobody touched my shit. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take my belt home this time. Okay, okay.